Hello, hello, what's up this afternoon, everyone? Welcome, welcome, welcome. Fine Tuesday to y'all in Murders at Carla Manor release day to y'all. Good to see you, good to see you, good to see you. Lustful Jeans, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup chair for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I am super excited. We have new magic cards to play. I know this time... Early access got canceled, unfortunately. Uh, so we're gonna do our own early access. Uh, that's all we can really do. So we're gonna do an early access style stream. We're rather than playing one deck a whole bunch of times, we're gonna be jumping around. I got so many things I wanna try out in this set and we'll see what's good, what works. And then we'll play more of those decks in the future once we start to figure it out. So that's the plan for today. We're checking out as many sweet new magic cards as possible. Jaguar, welcome to the fishbowl. And Purple Zorus Rex, welcome you as well. Big Soup Jerry. You. thank you thank you thank you thank you where's the top 10 video we're doing the top 10 on the podcast now so go to the podcast channel actually the last uh, goldfish podcast was our uh, best cards for constructed podcast so yeah we we kind of just merged the top 10 videos into the the goldfish podcast can you try some prismatic bridge shenanigans in timeless in the future i like the standard jank you did with it oh that could be a cool card to build around in timeless so hey what's up sir roberts how are you good to see you good to see you yeah there's there's multiple mold decks i'm really high on the mold so all right, let's, uh, let's go over the decks real quick. If you want to see any of these decks, uh, exclamation point deck will take you to a dock with the decks, the deck dock, so to speak. Uh, so if you go to the deck dock, you can see all the decks that we're going to play during our stream today uh, on the deck dock. Uh, dot deck. Are we going to find out if Archmage Charm made uh, green great again? I actually don't have an Archmage Charm deck. Maybe we should. So here's a little overview of our, uh, of our options. And we're going to get through as many of these as possible. So like I said, we're going to do this like early access where we're going to take in uh, oh, we have the Moto overlay. Let me. Am I on Moto instead of Arena? Oh, hey, there we go. There we go. Now we're on Arena. Um, so we're gonna play a few games with each deck. Try to get a sense of like what's working. Just see a ton of cool new stuff, and then go from there. So reminders first. Replay YouTube. That's where you can find all the old streams, including this one in the future. Normal YouTube. Uh, yesterday we did some history of modern, talking about the history of the modern meta. Tomorrow we got a fun, uh, a fun against the odds deck, pulling off one of my favorite kills in all the magic. So it's gonna be a sweet one. So tons of stuff coming up on the YouTube. A reminder that our sponsor today is Card Kingdom. If you need some magical cards. You can get them over at cardkingdom.com slash mtdgoldfish. If you get a free goldfish sticker, just let them know you want one in your order notes and they'll hook you up. Hey, what's up, Genitator? How are you? Good to see you. Good to see you. Can we start with the value pile deck? Ooh, maybe. Let's, we're going to go through the decks real quick and you can tell me which ones that you're most excited to uh, see. I think it must be noted that I just subscribed for my 69th. Oh, I missed the month. Jaguar, 69 months. The nicest of, uh, <laughs> of subs. Thank you so much. Any exciting Insidious Root decks idea? Oh, yeah, this is actually Insidious Roots here, yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's Insidious Roots. Okay, so here's the decks. Here's the decks. We're going to look through these decks real quick. You can tell me which ones you're most hyped for, and I'll try to make sure we get to the ones you're most hyped for, because there's so many decks here. So, here are our many options for today. Hey, welcome, Pimp. Good to have you. Uh, so, uh, here's the options for today. So, we're going to start down here. Reenact the Crime. I think Reenact the Crime, one of the most hyped cards from the set. Uh, so, basically... If you can get something in your graveyard and cast this in the same turn, you get to reanimate it in some speed for four mana. So basically, we got a bunch of like looting effects. We can get Portal to Phyrexia, Kaya's Virtue Persistence. There's one with the multiverse in the graveyard. Get it back for four mana. Hopefully use it to win the game. So uh, so yeah, that one seems sweet. War Leader's Call. I think this might be one of the competitive decks. I really think War Leader's Call in some sort of like Boros aggro deck with Gleeful Demolition is going to be really strong. Plus, we get to play Aurelia and Dog Walker for some reason. Dog Walker makes a lot of tokens, which works good with War Leader's Call. Uh, so we got that. Vanis Far Surprise. Uh, this deck's probably going to be bad, but I'm really hyped for. So the idea of Vanis Far Surprise is use Vanifar to hopefully cloak something like Portal to Phyrexia or one with the multiverse, or we can like hide in plain sight them. And then we just flip it up with Twinning Twins or Touch the Spirit Realm or Loxodon Gatekeeper or even like Werefox Bodyguard in a weird way. And then we get the portal like super easy, super free, win the game. So Vanifar Surprise, uh, Teamer Prowess, just like aggro, kind of as the name sounds. I think Breakout is really good in a deck full of prowess creatures. So it's basically trying to embrace the power of Breakout. Uh, so that's our aggro deck. Or 
Words of Delaney, Panharmonicons, of course, just generating all the value with all the triggers with down. Is it Delaney? It's not Delaney. Downing? Del Down? Is it Downy? Is that the name of that card? The Panharmonicon three drop. So, uh, Panharmonicon value stuff. Uh, we also have multiple clue decks. I'm actually not. Or Naya Molgod. I forgot Naya Molgod. Naya Molgod, uh, basically trying to haste in Anzareg, or if we don't have Anzareg, Argus Cross is really good with haste too. So we got like Reckless Storm Seeker, Invigorating Hot Springs, just smash it with the Molgod, get in with the Argus Cross, win the game with these huge, these huge, uh, these huge creatures. We have Clues and Detectives. These two decks are kind of similar. So uh, Clues is just generically focused on Clues. Blue White, everything makes Clue. Ezrum and Alquist Prof is their finishers. And then Detectives is very similar except it really goes in on the the detective plan you get like case of pilfered proof as a payoff for your detectives dread to the canal but it looks kind of similar because a lot of the detectives are making clues anyway uh we have insidious roots which is like exile stuff from your own graveyard to try to power up chalk line to power up insidious roots so fill the graveyard like tenacious underdog comes out of the graveyard mosswood red knight comes out of the graveyard graveyard trespasser exiles things from the graveyard dig up the body mills things returns it to our hand so lots of way to trigger these payoffs for things leaving the graveyard oh man so many decks naya morph it's a deck full of morphs and yaris is the big payoff for having a bunch of morphs because yaris seems pretty ridiculous oh my god mold stoppy this is another mold god deck this one's just straight gruel though and it's just play hasty stuff protect it with a jar smash it with the mold god uh assassin tribal <laughs> I'm actually intrigued by, I I think Atrata is a sleeper. I think Atrata is a sleeper in this set. I don't know why I keep getting stuck on the idea that Atrata is actually really good and no one talks about it. Atrata is a 1-4 death toucher is like pretty good at attacking, right? You're not going to want to block this because if you block it, you're going to lose your thing. And then when an assassin hits your opponent, you get to cloak the top card of your library. But what if? What if you played all assassins or as many assassins as possible because any assassin hitting your opponent is going to trigger this ability? So we're playing some janky cards to have them be assassins like even Heart Stabber, Bird Assassin, Pyrotechnic uh, Performer, Vashino Assassin, a Preacher of the Schism, sadly not an assassin, but Massacre Girl is, Vein Ripper is. So the more assassins, the more value we get out of our Atratas. And then, of course, uh, Who Ate My Feast is just like, it's life gain with a uh, case of the unre uh, uneaten feast our big problem to self who ate our who ate our dinner uh so white black life gain shenanigans and finally so many decks uh grixis thieves is just trying to steal all the opponent's guard deck and a dragon atrata deadly cover-up outrageous robbery just any way you could steal cards from your opponent and hope that your opponent's cards win the game huh <sighs> all right chat what do you want to see what do you want to see new cards have been added mismo Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. You can have my jank. Big soup cheer for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Want to see assassins? Assassins, insidious roots. I mean, ideally, we're going to get to see a lot of these decks. Mole God, Delaney. Mole God, give me the roots. Give me the mole God. Give me the thieves or the assassins. Okay, so I get a sense of people want to see people want to see assassins. People want to see mole God action. People want to see insidious root action. And morph, yeah, we gotta play a morph deck at some point. All right, let's. You know what? Let's start with assassins. Assassins number one. So the idea of assassins, and this might be, oh, we should do detectives too. We gotta do all these and Vanifar. We have so many decks. We gotta. Okay, we're just gonna play decks. We're gonna play decks. Oh, I also should say, I think we're gonna play best of one today, like early access, just so we get through more decks. I'd rather play. Uh, you know, like 10 different decks for a half hour, then play a half hour match with one deck and we don't get through many decks. So I think we're going to do best of one. Uh, in general, we do, we do best of three on the stream, but I think for the early access thing, best of one actually works better because I just don't want to get into these long, grindy, forever matches that happen in standard because I want to see as many cool new cards as possible. And then next stream and videos, we'll go back to uh, doing our best of three stuff. Hey, what's up, Dr. Chandler? How are you? So this is Assassins. So what is the idea of Assassins? Really, Atrata is the reason to put a bunch of assassins in your deck like i was saying i think atrata is actually like one of the sleepers from this set i think atrata is going to be really good and what's better than just hitting your opponent with atrata and triggering its ability to cloak your opponent stuff it's hitting your opponent with as many assassins as possible and our deck is just full of assassins we get good removal we get tons of assassins we swing in we hit you and hopefully that's enough that we can just win by cloaking our opponent stuff so can we redeem points for picking decks that is a good idea but i don't think the system is sadly set up that way it would be sweet if it was, though. You last time, we'll I don't know why. 
<laughs> have you noticed this? That like Sparky talks at you now for no reason. I don't know what happened to Arita, but for some reason today, once the update completed, now Sparky just floats around and yells at me. You'll find the color challenges under the events tab. Best of one means a lot of aggro. Yeah, I mean, we also the new season's on, so we got busted all the way, all the way back down to uh to gold. So who knows what we're gonna see against elephant puddles? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, no Atrada, but this hand's pretty good. So what do you think the what do you think the best deck's gonna be on the deck list? Are there any are there any that stand out? I'm really curious to see if this set can impact standard. I, I there's been a lot of complaints about standard lately. I've made some of those complaints. Other people have been complaining as well. I was looking though at the most played so so standard, the problem with standard is it feels a little bit stale because you see the same cards. But honestly, I was looking at the most played cards in standard and there is some good news, right? Like sure, Shieldred is still there. But if you look at the other creatures that are seeing heavy play, like Deep Cavern Bat's a new card, Preacher of the Schism, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Tidebinder, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Aklazots, Lost Caverns of Ixalan, Carnosaur, uh, Ixalan. There's a lot of there's a lot of new creatures that are actually seeing play in the format. So even though it's like the same archetypes that we've seen forever, there is some freshness, and that gives me a little hope that maybe, maybe, maybe this set's actually gonna actually gonna be able to uh, do something in Standard. Yeah, Standard is definitely the good stuff pile format. <laughs> No doubt about it. You should, Seth, you should, if you ever get to, wow, 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 wow. What is happening here? Outrageous robbery. Jay's perfected mine. Invasion of Tav what is our opponent doing? Invasion of Tavolta and Negate. So Esper, Esper control, I guess? Ha, huh. I don't know what to take here. Like this is annoying long-term. This will eventually be annoying. Jace, I mean, we just got to take the Jace. Yeah, let's take Jace. I think we take the Jace here, and then we can potentially Deep Cavern Bat the the big uh, theft spell, Sunset Revelry. Well, all right. Hit you for one. Bat number two. Steal a... Huh, oh, this is bad. This is bad. We're going to lose this one. We're going to take Memory Deluge, I think. It's really tough between Memory Deluge and Outrageous Robbery. The problem with Outrageous Robbery is it's stealing our cards. I think our cards are worse than our opponent's cards. <laughs> so I think we'd rather have them steal our cards than Memory Deluge. I mean, yeah, it's, it is kind of crazy just how good... How good uh, Deep Cavern Bats ended up being. Like, it's such a slight upgrade over Freebooter. I guess Freebooter was really good, though, during its age. <gasps> oh, no. Oh, this is over. This is this is so over. Hey, what's up, Magiri? How are you? Oh, this is bad. This is bad. Opponent, it's early access day. You're supposed to be playing Jank, not Esper. <laughs> didn't, you didn't you know, opponent? Opponent missed the message that it's early access day. <laughs> How good do you think Outrageous Robbery is? Hey, Seth, I got a question. You want a bear token, right? What kind of dog token do you want bear to be? 3-1 Vigilance, 2-2, two, two, what do you want? Ooh. I mean, 2-2 two, two is probably perfect. Hey, chat, I'm new here from Against Odds videos. I need to know if Bear has ever made an appearance on stream. Ah, uh, Bear's definitely made an appearance on stream. He doesn't make as many appearances on stream as CC does. Because uh, a lot of times when I'm streaming, Bear goes in a... And plays with his friends because he gets bored. So I usually send him off to puppy playtime when I'm streaming. So he's not always here. But uh but yeah, he has been on stream a few times. Hmm. Wandering Emperor. So our opponent's gonna be able to memory deluge. Oh, I wish we had an Atrata. We have all these assassins, they just aren't doing anything. Well, oh no, and oh, this is fine. Okay. So, Wandering Emperor, Wandering Emperor faced. We want to bait our opponent into flaring up their Restless Anchor Mage. So, we want them to think, oh, if I fire this up, I can protect my Wandering Emperor. If we send everything at the Wandering Emperor, then there's no reason for our opponent to fire this up because it's going to die anyway, and then they Memory Deluge. So, this worked exactly the way we wanted. Now, we get to kill the Restless Anchor Mage. And we kill the Wandering Emperor. Okay, okay. I mean, the thing is, they're going to hit a Sunfall at some point. Oh, sunfall. 
Hey Zeph, I got some insane luck. I pulled a 005 of 500 overgrown tube last week. Should I get it graded? I'm actually anchor, did I say anchor mage? Anchor, anchorage. <laughs> anchor, anchor mage. It's the anchor mage. Um, oh God, not again. Um, I actually don't know. Does anyone have a good sense of if it's worth grading serialized cards? I'm actually, I actually have not researched that. I, I do not have the answer. I mean, I, I guess the answer is yes, but I really don't know. I guess it probably depends on if you're going to hold it. I don't think it's going to increase the value significantly now. But like I said, I haven't really researched it, so maybe it would. I don't think it would increase the value that much now, but like long term, it might actually. Uh, they said 005 of 500, which I don't think is like 1 or 69 or 420 or 500 good, but I think it's like above average. It's not just like 247 or some like completely random number. All right, opponent. <laughs> Continue your killing of us. If we draw it, imagine though if we draw a Trotta here though. If we draw a Trotta, we get to hit our opponent, double cloak. Uh, we need we need a Trotta. We need a Trotta. We need it now. We need a Trotta. We need it now. Oh, uh, maybe you're right. Maybe that is like a really good number. That actually, that's actually that's actually a good point. So have any of you done any murders at Karlov Mannering yet? Yeah, we're trying to assassinate elephant puddles here, but they're resisting. They want to die. <laughs> uh, do you think do you think that uh I saw a professor from Tolerian Community College talking about this, wanting to not use murders at Karlov Manor in his like YouTube videos? Because he was afraid YouTube would get get mad and uh, like demonetize him or something. Is that, uh, do people actually care about murder? Like, is is this a bad set name for some reason? I had never even crossed my mind that, I guess I'm so used to just playing magic where murder is like a card in the game and saying those words that I wouldn't even cross my mind that that would be something that would be offensive, but <laughs> I did a sealed draft went horribly, kind of as expected. Sealed is weird. Ooh, what did you, what do you think of a uh, pre-release with play boosters? Did you think, wow, we might get a free win by timing out our opponent here, unfortunately. Which I guess we'll accept, but since it's the control deck, but not very satisfying. What do you think of a play booster pre-release? Ooh, Massacre Girl. I mean, we're going to play Massacre Girl. And we'll go to combat. We'll hit our opponent. We'll hit the Wandering Emperor. Dead and dead. Pass the turn. Opponent. Oh, did you know the list cards are coming to arena? I was I was actually just looking this up because I forgot that because of play boosters, now all the list cards come to arena. Which means we actually there's a couple of cards that are notable on the list for arena. Um let me see if I can find the list of the list again. I know there's the one I'm probably most hyped about, honestly, is Cadolth Rebirth. Cadolth Rebirth lets us actually do the... Let's us actually do the full-on, like, 8-whack thing. The problem is we're missing wax, right? So we have Kidalthra Rebirth, we got Gleeful Demolition, but we're missing the wax to actually make it happen. Otherwise, oh, Watsy excluded Death Cloud. I would have definitely loved to teach Arena Zoomers about Death Cloud. I, I love me some Death Cloud action. Death Cloud's such a cool card. But of course, Watsy wouldn't put that on Arena. It's too mean. Too mean for the Zoomers. Uh, wow, our opponent just actually... Well, uh, want to know? Want to know with Assassins? Want to know? Yeah, Rhinos, I think, can actually be a... Actually be a deck, maybe. You might be able to make a Rhino deck in, like, Timeless. I'm going to try it. I saw you talking about vintage packaging. Any interest in an alpha slash beta booster box? Ooh, like a like an empty booster box? Mmm, maybe. It would look kind of cool. I think I was trying to figure out. I was trying to figure out what to do because I got 
I got all these kind of like sweet vintage packs from that collection. Oh, this hand with a Trotto would be so good. I mean, we're going to keep this. I got all these cool like vintage packs. And I think there's got to be something I can do to hang on my wall with these, right? Like, I got to imagine I can, uh, there's got to be something. I'm imagining some sort of like collage or I don't know. I'm not artistic enough when it comes to stuff like that, but there's got to be something cool I can do with these. If you have any ideas of how I can like turn all these vintage packs into something cool to hang on my wall, let me know. Nesmith, welcome to the fishbowl for the 85th month. Thank you for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It is our unofficial early access day. Sadly. There's no real early access, so we're doing our version of early access, where we're checking out as many sweet new murders at Carlo Manor standard decks as we can possibly, possibly uh, play in one stream. Right now, we are playing Assassins. Atrata Assassins. Opponents. Felicia Archaeologist. Okay. So, some sort of graveyard deck. I advise against selling vintage packs as many people use those to reseal and scam. Really? Oh, wait. Are we going to play our first? Well, okay. I was thinking of playing our first face down creature, but it's probably better just to uh, make sure the pieces fit. <laughs> Boom. Stab your heart. What do we consider vintage sets in the magic community? That's a good question. I think of, personally, I think of pre-modern era sets as vintage. So like, uh, any, oh, I guess it's actually the border, right? So it's like pre-modern slash the old border. Those are the sets I would consider vintage. Can you post the link of the cards coming to arena? Yes. Uh, well, let's, let's do some attacking. Draw a card. Okay. Okay. I wonder if Avon Heartstabber is actually good. If you can actually turn it on, it's like Baleful Strix. It actually seems good. Well, let's... I guess... Oh, they shouldn't have a sweeper, right? All right, let's, uh, let's play... Let's play Heartstabber. Blood Tithe Harvester. I just want to see the Atrata. We have so many assassins. We would do so much cloaking if we could just find Atrata here. Uh, that's the that's the list of the list from Star City Games. Yes, Murders just dropped on Arena today. It's release day. Area OSW just waking up, jumping into the stream. What is the brew you're salving, or uh, what is the brew you are salving, or maybe getting away with? Uh, so we're playing a ton of different decks today. We're doing we're doing our own early access with blackjack and hookers, just like Bender from Futurama. Um, oh God, Bone Picker. I remember people being super hyped about Bone Picker and then it flopping so hard. I do remember, yeah. People thought it was the new Delver. It was going to be the new Delver, and it was it was not the new Delver. <laughs> Wait, how are they getting turn three Atroxa? What is... This has to be that new blue... Oh, we drew it! We drew Atrata! We actually drew Atrata. Uh... I don't know how much interaction they're going to have. We got to go for it. We came here to do this. Atrata, opponent, please tell me you don't have interaction. I'll be so sad. We just want to do cute assassin things. Opponent. No, no, no. Kill that preacher. That's fine. Kill the preacher. That's okay. Don't read Atrata. No reading Atrata. They're reading Atrata. They're reading Avon Heartstab. You can see him reading. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> they know that we have assassins. Oh, wait, they didn't kill it yet. Uh, swing. Trigger Preacher. Draw a card. Come on. We just want to do a little cloak and blocks. And, uh, oh my goodness, it worked. Okay, okay, okay. Two assassin hits. Atrata. Cloak. Come on, something big. Something big. Let's get a, let's get an Atroxa. We have a Felicia Archaeologist, okay. And, oh, Gaia, that's a Gaia. That's a Gaia, that's a Gaia, that's a Gaia. Opponent, otherworldly gaze, that's a Gaia. And we can do it with Atrata's ability. Atrata's ability, we can pay for to cast it if it's not a creature. We did it. 
<laughs> assassins it's actually working how do you feel about ravnica set not actually being on ravnica it's staggering how little watsy cares they just stuffed a few known characters into a random set and not even bothered trying to make rare lands make sense of the world they're supposedly in harsh but true any recommendations for budget best when constructed format for climbing the ladder Wait, any recommendations for a budget best of one constructed format deck? What a like standard blazing fashion. Come back to me in a come back to me in a couple days. <laughs> the everything's so new and standard. Oh. Really? Uh well that's that's a shame. That is a shame. We do get to mill some cards and draw some cards. Oh. Oh, I can't believe they had that. Who plays that? Well, Cavern of Souls on human, I guess. Cavern on human. Oh, that was so close to being good. Let's play. You know what? Let's play a mysterious creature. <laughs> And play another mysterious creature. Pass the turn. Yeah, we're we're probably in trouble now. Terror Tide. Was not expecting that. <laughs> Wrath number 47 in a <laughs> in our current standard format. That was so good too. It was so good. About it. Invasion of Tilvolda. To reanimate one with nothing. Yeah, we might we might be in trouble. We might be in trouble. What's in our opponent's hand? Ah, boo! Boo! I'm so excited. Uh, excited for Insidious Roots for Modern. Another two minute enchantment ready to break Modern. Do you think it's that good? Like, you think it's actually? Do you think it's actually strong enough to see like real Modern play? I know there's combos. Like, if it's supporting an infinite combo, that makes sense. I don't think it's like up a beanstalk though. I don't know. I under, I guess I underrated up a beanstalk too. So, but I don't see it as something you can just jam in like every every deck. Well, we'll try this. So we know Bear's opinion about Primeval Titan from your videos. <laughs> Does CC have any hot magic metagame takes? <laughs> uh, I mean, we know that she we know that she hates Cyclonic Rift. <clears throat> she actually she actually destroyed yeah. My Cyclonic Riff, sadly. Well, let's, uh... I guess we bat away Amy. So, opponents playing Life Gain. Oh, Assassins, yeah, they've done cool things, but so far, we have not... We have not really won with them. Ooh, that's a Trotta, though. That is a Trotta. Well, I mean, get in hit ya. Found it. Down to 19. Play a Trotta. Do a little Cloakin. Do you think that Cloak and Disguise have a chance in Standard? Hey, Seth. Hope all is well. I recently got married and signed a lease with my... What? Wait. You and your wife signed... Oh, I see. I gotcha. I was like, wait, you got married and part of that was having your wife sign a lease? That's... I don't think that's how marriage normally... I gotcha. I gotcha. You got married and then also signed a lease uh, with your wife. Okay. That congrats, congratulations! I was just imagine going to a wedding and then having having the happy couple like signing signing a lease. <laughs> uh, well, I mean, ooh, and a massacre girl. Well, let's uh get in with a Trotta. Step one: if our opponent blocks with the resplendent, if they double block here, we're kind of okay with that. Opponent takes it. What do we get? What do we get? It is a land, okay. Not the most exciting. Well, Deep Cavern, bat you. Take a... Hmm. There's multiple cards that are a problem. Let's take, I guess, Steel Seraph. Oh, this is bad in, this is bad. This is bad news. We did not cloak wisely. We cloaked a Caves of Koilos. 
Hey, what's up, uh, guy is zombie? How are you? Good to see ya. Voice of the Blessed and the Tap Land. Opponent passes. Cut down. Not doing well. Cut down can kill the Lunark veteran, I guess. Hmm. Well, get in with the Trotta. Let's keep cloaking. Oh, opponent. The greed. The greed. Kill the Lunark veteran. Kill the resplend. Oh, that was so big. Kill the resplendent angel. Play another face down creature. Definitely, it's definitely Willbender. And, uh, <laughs> land go. <laughs> Seth, I think a trot is cool, but too overcosted for the ability to flip cards. Maybe add training grounds. I mean, do you, uh, do you need to flip the cards for it to be good? I think is is kind of the question like do we actually need to to activate that ability or is just like a trotta getting in there and generating card advantage like is that enough to make a trotta good that's kind of what i was thinking is just like the free two twos with the chance that sometimes we might flip them is enough to make it worthwhile well let's play massacre girl Go to combat, attack, attack, attack. Massacre Girl's pretty good here, because if our opponent blocks our two twos, we shrink their stuff at least. <gasps> uh, flip it up. Ha ha. Surprise, Fire Technic Performer. Three ya, hit ya, double cloak. Ooh, Gumdrop Poisoner and, wait, Gumdrop, uh, double Gumdrop Poisoner, okay. Asmo Daredevil decks are going to make a comeback with Insidious, or it's really good because the plus one plus one counter ability isn't limited to once per turn. <clears throat> yeah, I think that's probably the the most obvious home for uh, for modern. Any chance we play Kaya today? Ah, <sighs> I I haven't really built a Kaya deck. People keep asking about Kaya. We could build. You, you want to brew a Kaya deck? We could brew a Kaya deck. Well, opponent hits us. We take it. How do we gain life? Well, go to combat. I mean, we're just gonna we're just gonna attack him. Get in there. What do you say, opponent? Here comes the face down creatures. I mean, they can't kill the massacre girl. They still get a ton of counters. Well, let's uh, flip this one up. And you know what? Let's just flip both of them up. Pyrotechnic Performer is going off. Going off? That's a Pyrotechnic Performer win. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, is Pyrotechnic Performer actually good? That was like a pretty impressive win for this deck. I I do not know how to I do not know how to make Kaya work really. Mm, yes, Sam's Sam's foil video was really good. All right, let's do another couple with uh, with assassins and then we'll move on to uh, to the next deck. Yeah, the the foil video was very interesting. Any plans to do any more historic brawl content? There's actually a brawl deck coming out this week on the YouTube. So yes, brawl. I mean. I, I enjoy Brawl, but it's kind of a, a sometimes thing. I don't think that Brawl, it's unlikely to ever be, like, something that we do, like, weekly or whatever. I mean, well, okay, chat, let me know, let me know your thoughts on that. Do you want to try to build a brew around Kaya? Or would you rather just keep playing decks that we have? Because I'm open to either option. The only thing about brewing is it takes a bit, so... It would eat into our time for playing other decks, probably. But a lot of people have asked about Kaya. I don't what are your ideas for making Kaya work? Give me give me some ideas. Give me some ideas for for how to make it work. So Kaya, if you think about Kaya. Ooh, that's a Trotta. Well, we're gonna Cavern on Assassin. Run out the Heart Stabber. If we draw land, we can get down to Trotta and start cloaking. If they kill this, we draw a card, which is good. 
If we don't draw land, then we can virtue. Oh, just don't exile. No, like, flame bless bolt or something. That would be sad. No exile removal. I'm, like, kind of... I'm kind of skeptical. What did they do? Can I just block this? Okay. Uh, block, I guess. <laughs> Unnatural Moonrise. Well, we lose our heart stabber. We mill two lands that we actually really wanted to draw. Oh, that <laughs> that's disappointing. Oh, uh, I want to try to make Melic like, Fling work. I have I built a deck for it. It might be a budget magic deck because the pieces are pretty cheap. So okay, let's let's look at Kaya. I don't think we're gonna brew Kaya right now. We'll see. Maybe later in the stream. I want to play some of the decks that we have built and kind of like get a sense of. Well, there's the land. Kind of get a sense for uh, for how the cards feel and how they work. I am very intrigued by Kaya, though. Also, from a more, like, competitive perspective, skeptical, perhaps, of Kaya. I just, like... Ah. It seems like... So, the thing about Kaya is... <laughs> I swear they... I swear they actually... They actually had to make the text smaller for that ability. They did, didn't they? Isn't that text smaller? Or is it just my eyes? <laughs> I feel like they had to lower the font size just to make it fit. The thing about Kaya is, even when it works... Oh, go boy, are we getting botted? Oh, boy. All right, let's, let's put our mod skills to the test. Uh... <laughs> All right, let me let me see. I, we, we never have to ban people. <laughs> That's the thing. It doesn't happen very often. There's another one. Why did they? That's a lot of bots. Um. All right, back to the back to the game. Back to the game. I think we got the bot situation. Maybe. Maybe, uh, maybe under control, thanks to, uh, Dog of Myth. Yeah, we haven't seen them in forever. Which is nice. I feel like a bot sometimes. So here's the thing, here's the thing about Kaya. I feel like Kaya, if we make it work, what do we get out of it? Like, how do we make this really spectacular? Oh, jeez. All right. Yeah. Opponent's playing, apparently, Werewolf Control over there. <laughs> Good old Werewolf Control deck. Every removal spell in existence does not want to get cloaked for some reason. Stone Rain! Yeah, our opponent should grab a leg. You're right. Grab a leg. No, and more removal? They really are. They really are Werewolf Control. All right. <laughs> Opponent has drawn all the non-creature spells. <laughs> Double Tamiyo safekeeping. Well, there's a Tovalar. Oh, no, it's a 4-4? Four, four? That's awkward. Uh, all right. Boom. How about that? Well, we get rid of the... We get rid of the safekeeping. And then we can long goodbye it. Oh, it flips. That's even better. So now we can Virtue of Persistence it. I mean, we are going to, I think, win this game eventually. Our opponent's just not doing anything. <laughs> they're just killing our stuff, but they're not actually making any real strides. Pimper Rex. Well, ooh, that's actually a good draw. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tube for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, opponent. Wolfing. Well, kill a wolf. I'll play the cavern on assassin and run out massacre girl go yeah really it does feel like they're <laughs> like they're playing a control build of werewolves somehow uh... what does grab a leg mean no one no one knows it's the only emote I have access to <laughs> so it means I guess it means everything. A anything. <laughs> it's open to interpretation. So wait, how do we... Okay, they turn on their... 
Did they just... Wait. Did our opponent just cast this on the wolf and then not attack with it? Oh, okay. Sure. Sure. <laughs> yes. <laughs> well, uh, I think we will kill this wolf. Boom. Negative three, negative three. Are they going to save it? They might save it. But then they're out of cards, and we just kill the Arlen anyway. Man, coming back to playing MTD is overwhelming. Who? So TT, when uh, when was the last time? When was the last time you played? I'm actually I'm curious because I think you're right that it is. It has gotten much more overwhelming. Yeah, let's play a performer. No reason to, well, I guess there still is a reason to attack because we will wither away the wolf if they block. The Plus, suffering. apparently Masker Girl has menace now. How did how did Masker Girl get uh, get menace? <laughs> okay, I think I think we're good. I think the I think the chat might be good. Assassins is working. Assassins is kind of working. Okay, so we got distracted by the bots. We got distracted. We're going to do one more assassin game and then we're switching to Mole God? I think people want to see Mole God and then Delmi. Um, so wait, what is, how do you actually make Kaya big? So here's the problem I ran into with Kaya, right? So to make Kaya work, you need tokens, stuff in the graveyard, essentially, or like some way to exile things. You can use blink effects, potentially. What is the reward for that, though? Like you do all this, your reward is like your clue token becomes a shield rid or something i i kind of want something more spectacular than that i think i kind of want something more spectacular oh the new niv makes me so sad i could go on a 10 minute rant about that niv i that niv they done so wrong watsy did did niv dirty this set urborg lurigoy fanning out the gift subs to j Lewell, fallen the tuxedo man super devil and custard welcome to the fishbowl thank you so much for your subscription Big soup here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh no, dog, you're you're killing it, dog. Thank you. Uh thank you so much actually for uh for handling that. Saving the day. Well, let's uh let's just deep cavern bat. We don't have the trotta anyway. Is Shin Kaya since tokens have pseudo hit Oh boy. It's this deck. Oh no, look at all that removal. That's so much removal. Uh, does it even matter what we take here? Do you ever, you ever cast a bat and then look at your opponent's hand and then scoop? <laughs> I'm actually, I'm actually tempted to just scoop. <laughs> I don't know if there's, I don't know if there's any way around this. Uh, I mean, I guess it's technically temporary. The thing is, we take temporary lockdown. They can lay line binding and get it back. No matter what we do, they're going to get it back. So bat just doesn't really do anything. I mean, I guess that's a good argument for the Niv, that it's lower powered, right? So if there is a concern about being arch enemy, it does, it does actually help there. That's actually an upside. Well, run out the heart stabber. Pass the turn. We need an Atrata. We need to we need to do some cloaking real quick about it. Yeah. Yeah, I guess. Uh, but if hmm. Yeah, I guess if we take the Stomper, they have to draw another actual white source because they're on double caverns. There could be an argument for that, actually. There could be an argument for just taking the Stomper. Anyone brew a good Massacre Girl deck yet? Well, I mean, this is a Massacre Girl deck. I don't know if it's I don't know if it's good. <laughs> that might be that might be asking too much, but it is a Massacre Girl deck. I honestly think I honestly think that uh well we'll see. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised to see Wizards back ta uh, backtrack on the rotation thing. If they go land Sunfall, we're, I think we're done. <laughs> Next deck. Okay. Tap land Sunfall. About it. Ah, Sunfall. These Exile Raz. I don't know if Raz... <clears throat> I don't know. 
This, these rats are powerful. Like, not only exiling, but the incubate. I mean, the wrath that kind of showed that, right? That, like, you can actually build a deck that is literally all wraths and it works. This feels bad, but I think we actually just have to block here to minimize the number of things that are going to get exiled this unfall. Plus, we get to draw a card. Not a good card, but a card. Well, get in, hit you. Blackleaf Cliffs. No reason to preacher. Pass the turn. Fail proof. Welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. What about going to timeless and turning the token Kaya creates into an infect creature? Ooh, wait. Okay. What would that do though? Wouldn't it just be an infect creature still? Like when you just get in for like one infect or something. Is there any, so, oh, okay. Is there any way doing this multiple times can allow you to one-shot kill someone? Because it's not restricted, ew, it's not restricted to once a turn, right? What was the, wasn't there like a, a Lazav, wasn't there like a Lazav deck or something? I'm thinking of, I think it was in Commander, but wasn't there like a Lazav where you can like, turn it into one thing and activate an ability and then turn it into another thing and activate the ability and that ends up with like a one-shot kill creature is there any way we can do that with with kaya is there any way because that would be sweet if we can figure out a one-shot kill combo then i'll be all in on i'm trying to make kaya work i i like timeless a lot the only thing about timeless is i mean i guess we'll have some I guess we'll have uh, <clears throat> some time to experiment with it. But uh, the only thing about Timeless is I think it might be a little bit like Modern or Legacy where I'm not sure how many new cards will actually break into it. It's just such a powerful format that I think it, it kind of has that real eternal format feel, right? Where I'm not sure how much, how like how many cards from Murders of Karlov Manor are actually going to see play in Timeless the number might be kind of small, honestly. Yeah, show and tell in time was going to be intro. Oh, it's our turn? I thought it was our opponent's turn. Why is our clock running? Yoda man, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup, cheer for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Well, domain. Doing domain things. <laughs> There's still three removal spells. You got it, opponent. Next deck. So what do we what do we learn about? <laughs> What do we learn about <clears throat> assassins as I lose my voice? I feel like, yeah, undergrowth retcon, maybe. Even that's, like, pretty slow, right? It does synergize with fetch lands. But if you think about it, if you retcon on turn three, turn four, you get a tap land. Turn five, you finally you finally actually do something. Um, I will say assassins... Felt, what did we go, three and two? I feel like it felt reasonable. I think Atrada did live up to the hype. Atrada actually felt pretty good. Uh, Sunfall, Sweepers, still still kind of a problem. Uh, all right, we got a, we got a Mole God. We got a Mole God. People wanted Underground uh, Raccoon. <laughs> Seems pretty good. <laughs> I think Kaya fits in Abzan because the biggest, scariest creatures tend to be green. And remember the token gets flying, so free evasion. So just play it for uh for value. All right, let's see if we mole god stomp people. So this is Naya mole god. Uh, basically, Anzarag, Argus Crows, haste him in, smash you in the game. Simple as that. Nothing else. I think Atrada is actually good. I'm still high on Atrada. I also think mole god might be busted. I haven't played any mole god yet. This is the first the first mole god I've played. It'll sparky <laughs> chill sparky <laughs> chill <laughs> is there a way to is there a way to make sparky shut up <laughs> is there a way to quiet the sparkster uh... <clears throat> not if you copy something like Skitherix or you could go to necrogen rot priest route with a big toxic creature, that would be sweet with Kaya. Yeah, my voice is like, 
I don't know. I was like congested last night. Maybe I'm getting a cold or something because my voice is definitely not as not as a uh, silky smooth as usual. <laughs> I know Sp Sparky beat me once and now it won't leave me alone. I feel like I'm being stalked. <laughs> Stalk stalker Sparky. <laughs> no matter where I go in arena, Sparky's just there annoying me. Oh, I really kind of wanted to land here. Well, Scralvia. Who's the toxic deck now? Have you tried the two-minute red enchantment that impulse draws on damage? It seems broken with a Pia Quintorius deck. Eh, all right. Scrawl down. Sure. Land. Oh, that's not a land. Well, Scrawl go. I haven't, I haven't tried that enchantment yet. That is a cool uh, home for it, though. I think the the cast from Exile Plant is probably the the way to go. The fact that it's symmetrical makes it a little bit sketchy, right? Aria with a thousand bit donation. I want to break her and use her as mass reanimation. Use her as mass reanimation. Uh, Planeswalker by comboing her with the Jukabog and Rest in Peace and Soul Guide Lantern doesn't work with Blink. By the way, do we even play this? I guess we just pass. Wait, Kaya doesn't work with Blink? Doesn't it just say if something is put in exile? Let me let me read this again. Whenever one or more creatures you control and or creature cards in your graveyard are put in exile, shouldn't it work? Like if you cast a ephemera on a creature, it's going to exile. Why would that not work? Whenever one or more creatures you control and or creature cards in your graveyard. So it's creatures you control too. Yeah, 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 yeah. So I think it does work. I'm pretty sure it does work with blank. Um, well, we're not doing anything else. Actually, yeah, let's just, let's wait. Come on, action. Oh, where's our red mana? Did I forget to put red lands in this deck? <laughs> oh, found it with the Quirion Beast Caller. Oh, we have so much mid-range power and no way to cast it. I was watching your video on the modern, modern metagame. What cards do you think WotC should unban? Which cards should they ban now? The unban list, there's actually quite a few cards that I think uh, could come off the ban list. There's so like Umazawa's Jite's one, uh, Green Sun Zenith, potentially. Moss with Dread Knight. All right, let's, I guess we do have to kill this. Let's kill the Beast Caller. Uh, Blazing Shoal, Glimpse of Tomorrow. There's there's a pretty long list of cards that I think would be okay to come off the ban list. Bannings, that's where it gets tricky. I I don't even know anymore. I think at this point I want to wait and see. Oh yeah, birthing. Really? Another green white source. Did I like mess up this mana base or? <laughs> Um, I'm gonna have to look at this deck. Did I mess up the mana base or are we just drawing very awkwardly this game? <laughs> oh, Skull Clamp. Actually, Skull Clamp, Skull Clamp would be busted, right? It's gotta be busted. Splinter Twin Birthing Pod. I think Splin is the safer of the two to unban. I think Splinter Twin, 100% fine. Birthing Pod, I think it would be fine. Although, the thing that gives me pause is we do keep getting more and more more and more uh, powerful creatures and the stronger creatures get the stronger birthing pod gets yeah skull clamps banned everywhere basically do you have any plans for a thousand year storm of slime against humanity deck for against that sounds fun i mean i think we'll definitely be playing slime against humanity haven't really figured out exactly exactly where or how yet but uh but yes we will be doing some sliming at some point with Bowmasters in the format, I don't see. All right, let's, okay, you got it, opponent. Let's look at this mana base. Did I forget to add red lands? <laughs> I don't think I forgot to, I don't think I forgot to add red lands. Was that just super, super bad running? Or super bad deck building? <laughs> we are about to find out. Is there red mana in this deck? Oh yeah, there's a ton of red. Yeah, I mean, I guess we just drew. We just drew all the, we just drew all the Slesnia lands. Okay, yeah. I think Kaya could be good with Crime Novelist. Ooh. Okay. So, so use Kaya to turn a token into a Crime Novelist. 
Huh. What does it do with crime novelists, though, Stone Rain? I mean, the thing that makes the Blink plan kind of intriguing is then you can have multiple copies of a thing, right? So you have, like, you have the crime novelist. You blink it with an ephemera. It goes to exile momentarily. You turn a clue token or the spirit token into a copy of it. And then you have two of them, and then you go off and win the game. Something like that seems pretty sweet. If you're exiling it from the graveyard, it kind of is the same as just casting it for the most part. Does Watsy ever consult with... Does Watsy ever consult with you guys or content creators for comments on products or ideas for standard? Just felt like this new set felt flat, in my opinion. Maybe could have avoided that with a bit more player insight. Um, not so. Maybe they do with some people. Watsy never consults me about stuff like that. Uh, opponent, another mountain. So yeah, I've never been consulted about it. Maybe, maybe they consult other people. It's possible, and I'm not aware of it. Um, uh, so we can't do the thing next turn anyway. Yeah, let's just, I think we just questing druid. Let's just pass. I guess we get in with Skrelv. Questing druid. So we play Reckless Stormseeker, but we can't draw a land and Mole God next turn anyway. So I think it makes more sense just to draw cards and hit lands and try to set up for the, the Mole God in the future. But I do agree that this set, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm I'm on the fence. I feel like I feel like this set fell flat from a flavor perspective for me. Oh no! Land! Oh! Come on, magic gods. Come on, magic gods. Mole god in exile going to waste. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is the worst. Oh. Yeah, Questing Druid's great. Questing Druid's so good. Opponent kills us. Thundering Raju. <laughs> Boo. Well, yeah, somehow our mono red... Our mono red opponent is outdrawing us land wise. Well, there's the land we desperately needed several turns ago. Uh, as it is, though, I think we just literally die. Wow, that was an embarrassment. Is this tech bad? Maybe this tech is bad. I honestly feel okay. So, chat, I mentioned this on the podcast, but I think it might be true. What are the odds that Hasbro went to Watsi and was like, You are making a clue set because we want to support. <laughs> Clue's 75th anniversary. Like, figure it out. I don't care what you do, but you're making this set because I want to clue universes beyond. Could you imagine, like, Chris Cox, like, walking walking down the hall to, to Watsi and knocking on Morrow's door and being like, hey, guys, like, this is happening. <laughs> this is happening. Don't bother complaining <laughs> because, because Clue, you know, <laughs> it actually seems realistic to me it seems it seems possible i think it's possible well let's run out of scrub first stream so excited i caught it hey welcome dave good to have you we are uh experimenting with new murders of carla manor stuff today so far getting a little a little racked with this deck the mole god has not has not done its thing yet I'm excited about this Argus Cross, potentially, if we live long enough. I mean, Skrelv protects the Gatekeeper. Gatekeeper blocks something. Adeline would be bad. Because next turn, we're probably just playing Hot Springs. Pounder attacks with both. I mean, we are going to... We are going to block. Kill the Vanguard. Drop to 14. Okay, Resolu Reinforcements. And Warden of the Inner Sky. Hmm. Ah, why is there so much aggro in Best of One? <laughs> it's just all aggro all the time. Well, Invigorating Hot Springs, go.
What do you think of this Pioneer deck? Let me take a peek. Opponent, land on human. Oh God, Imidane's Recruiter and death. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. That was not especially close. <laughs> Fires, eh? I mean, Fires is a cool, is a cool, uh, a cool deck. It hasn't been like super competitive recently, but I mean, it seems seems like a solid Fires deck. Kellen's kind of a neat addition as a way to potentially ramp into Fires. I I like it. Yeah, Skrelv did not did not actually help us there. Hey Seth, any against the odds decks you were looking forward to play? I've been trying to figure out against the odds from this set. This set's kind of tricky. Like, what jumps out to you as a good against the odds card? Because I've actually really been I mean, I think there's some options of like synergies, like some sort of like reanimate conspiracy unraveler or something. Uh expedite inheritance is like super wonky and just weird so maybe there's maybe there's something there but there's no like win the game card there's a so the the easy mode of just like <clears throat> trying to pull off the alt win con that doesn't really seem to exist this set so i've really been i've really been trying to figure out most of what I've come up with is like more synergies, right? Like try to cloak something big with Vanifar and then uh, blink it into play. But there's no like win the game card. Barb Servitor, like stuffy dolls are always cool. Doppelgang. Doppelgang is a really sweet card. Well, we're going to try this. We're going to try this Skrelv hand. I got a Kaya with Monastery Mentor. I got it. Kaya with Monastery Mentor. All the tokens Mentor makes turn into mentor all the tokens mentor makes turns into mentor Ooh, that's a that's a cool idea stone rain i i like that idea have you seen is it murpho combo uh i mean i've seen murpho combo i don't know if i've seen i don't know if i've seen is it actually but how's mkm been going so far i mean we've only played a couple decks we played assassins assassins went pretty well uh, now we're playing Molgod, and we've mostly just, uh, I don't know. I'm almost tempted to switch to best of three. I don't know if that's, uh, but if we play best of three, I don't know, chat. What's your, what's your, uh, what's your take, chat? What's your opinion? So I feel like if we, so if we switch to best of three, we'll definitely have more. I mean, it won't be aggro every round, but if we switch to best of three, we are going to get through way fewer decks because our matches are going to be 45 minutes. So we get through like a deck instead of seven decks or whatever. Best of three if it makes us see new cards more. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I mean, I, I definitely agree that best of one is better than best of three overall. But like early access, maybe. Hmm. Maybe it works on early access because. <clears throat> everyone's trying new things and and now we're well that's a mole god we get to do the mole god thing it's not enough to like win us the game here but that is a hasty eight for as we die to our opponent playing uh four one drops <laughs> boom and zarag nine ya is there any way we survive this hit ya found it to nine. I mean, this is a power hands rig if we somehow were alive next turn, which the odds are incredibly low, but like they can't do anything about it, right? If you block it, you die. If you don't block it, you die. You can block it five times in a row, it's still gonna die. It's gonna keep attacking until it eventually kills you. So it's oh, that's the power of the mole god. That's the power the power. I missed two subs back to back. Did I really? Free Jazz and Dan Wildfire. Hey, my apologies, uh, uh, Doug. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. I built a budget Judith deck. Ooh, let me let me see, Doug. Uh, opponent. Best of three, but scoop after round one. <laughs> that would that would probably make opponent salty. Down to four. Wait, are we are we gonna live? This is game. We did it! Mole God! Mole God! Boom! Boom! Mole God! 
Oh, we're going to see it. Opponent. Would you like to block our mole god, opponent? Would you like to block our mole god? You better block it or else you're going to die. You better block it. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, wait. Are we getting too cocky? Are they, you know, like monstrous rage or something? Is there a way they can kill the mole god? <clears throat> All right, opponent. Flocks. <laughs> And untaps an extra combat and about it. Sees the power of the mole god and uh, <laughs> scoops it up. Oh, mole god's so good. I need to win back my. I need to win back my channel points from last week. How about a win loss prediction? Ooh, yeah. If, uh, you know what? Actually, if anyone wants to uh, to put one up, you're more than welcome to. We have a mole god. Yeah, mole god's really powerful. Judith, uh, Judith looks sweet, Doug. Racto spell slinger is kind of a kind of a neat color combination. That's a color combination that <clears throat> doesn't have great, doesn't have great. Uh, <laughs> doesn't Kid Rock sing about the mole god? Doesn't have great uh, spell slinger commander. So that's pretty sweet. Hey, welcome to the stream, failproof. Good to have you. Thank you so much. Ooh. All right, all right. We need a Mole God or an Argus Cross. We need one of the four drops, but this hand's fine. I also want... It still feels really weird that there's no early access. Oh, I know, Delphi. Tell me about it. I feel like spamming the ooze, it might be slime against humanity, right? That might actually be the number one. The number one against odds card from the set. Well, Rage Over Thicket, it, go. Mole got, mole got. You need a red or blue for spell slinger. Just like blink needs white or blue. Both work better with both colors, but you really need at least one of the primary colors. Yeah, red does pretty well, right? As a spell slinger color. Black, I mean, I guess black actually offers some really interesting. Yeah, I'm excited about uh, Chicago too. Definitely stop and say hello, Pabs. Um, I think that Black offers some interesting options for Spell Slinger just because Judith makes tokens and Black has a lot of like village right effects and so forth, deadly disputes. They can sack the tokens for value. So I feel like chaining together those like two mana draw one, uh, twos, one mana draw twos, that might actually be one of the one of the best ways to play it. Um, you know what? Let's just regular Storm Seeger. See if they have a removal spell that can kill it. Ooh, yeah, I've actually, I've been through Chicago, but I've never actually been in Chicago. So it'll technically be my first time in Chicago, too. Boom, hit ya. Slime Against Humanity is also very budget-friendly. Sort of. It, like, is on Arena, but it's not actually budget-friendly in paper. <laughs> in paper, Slime Against Humanity itself is, like, four bucks a piece or something absurd. Well, Reckless Storm Seeker. Token, hit ya. I mean, they're untapping with this hulking raptor, though. We need a mole god. We need a mole god, and we need the mole god in the very near future. Opponent, Drummondy Carnosaur. Off of the hulking raptor mana. Spins into just a ramp spell, okay. How about a mole god? How about a mole god? Oh, that's a bad land instead. Well, uh, Overrum Farmland, Virtue. Uh, start growing the dorks. So it's still not a great spot to be in. Like, we're growing the team, but our opponent's dinosaurs are just bigger. We need a mole god. We need a mole god. Just be careful when going to... Sh oh, my goodness. That's an... Oh, tally. If they get a mole god, I'm going to be very displeased. Cool. All right. They hit a virtual loyalty, which is also bad. Oh, my... Oh! Oh, and another Itali. That's not good. That's not good at all. Reckless Storm Seeker and a. <sighs> well, Itali. That's a thing that it does. A bonnet gets to haste in something. Now I don't even think a mole god saves us, honestly. As Hulking Raptors just go. Well, double Itali is brutal. <laughs> Slime is probably the most expensive common. I'd have to, like, 
actually research it to make sure, but I I think it is. Not running any wraths. Yes, why uh, our aggro deck is not running any wraths. Seek the beast. Ugh, double land and death. Does this deck even Well, I mean the deck if you look at the deck list. Yeah, there's not much you can really do about your opponent going Carnosaur Italia Italia. That's just kind of 2024 magic that there's just these like, hey, I cast this thing and it like puts 40 mana value of stuff on the battlefield. That's that's just kind of how magic goes uh, these days. Um, the deck, I think, uh, I think the deck is functional without the mole god. If you look at the deck list. If you look at the deck list, like, it's kind of like Naya creatures, right? It's like mostly decent magic cards, but uh, one land. We didn't see Molgod or Ar. We didn't see any payoffs. We didn't see Argus Cross. We didn't see Molgod. We just didn't see any of those that game, which is kind of the, kind of the issue. Opponent. Oh, oh, boy. Going to do some countering, I assume. Yeah, I mean, I think that's the downside of, one of the downsides of a, our three-year standard thing is a lot of decks are mediocre compared to playing just the, a pile of the best cards of the past three years. So I think, I think pretty much anything's going to be underpowered compared to like, you know, the, just playing the like 20, 20 strongest cards in the format every deck. Well, let's play a Skrelv, and then we can Questing Bees to try to hit a land to get down the Anders Rag. Yeah, I don't know much about, I don't know much about Chicago. I don't even know where in the, in the city the event is, so it should be interesting. Why not find a slot for Molgod and Current Gruel Agno with Picnic Ruiner? I don't know if it really fits with the, the Gruel Agro Pump Spell deck. I think that deck wants mostly just all the all the cheapest possible creatures. Opponent planes and gonna crack some maps. All right, crack some map. Top card is a Skrelv. Have you seen any sweet new decks? I don't think we've seen a new card from our opponents. Period. <laughs> have we? Have we seen a? Uh, have we seen any new cards? opponent hits us down to 16 does some looting slime against humanity with arcane bombardment would be really fun roofer against the odds that could be funny i kind of like the arcane i kind of like the arcane bombardment idea opponent discards a homestead courage oh god opponent <laughs> All right, decides to crack their map token. Presumably mills a second Malcolm. And does not play their Skrelv. Okay, well, Seek the Beast. Aw. Hmm. Well, I mean... We gotta play something. Play the land. I mean, we came here to Mole God. Let's play the Mole God. Play the Mole God. No attacks. All right, opponent. <laughs> Kill us if you can. Kill us if you can. Hey, what's up, Sweet Deets? How are you? Yeah, Anzarag's a really cool commander, that's for sure. Simon Gets Manny is the fifth most expensive common in the last five years. Uh, other is Lotus Petal, the list. Yeah, that's a little cheaty. Creeping Bloodsucker. What is Creeping Bloodsucker? Okay, so what is creeping? I don't even know what creeping bloodsucker is. A common from Jumpstart 2022. At the beginning of your upkeep, deals one damage to each opponent. You gain life equal. Huh? Has anyone ever played this card? Interesting. It must just be because Jumpstart is so scarce. It's got to be. Huh. The reprints make sense. So Slime Against Humanity is 
<laughs> Discounting creeping blood sucker. Okay, how about this? It's the most expensive common from a standard set in the last five years. I think that's I think that is true. Bownet gets in with a Malcolm. Atrata is actually crazy and historic, bro. The bit if you flood the board with two twos with Ward is awesome. Yeah, that was the first deck we played was an Atrata deck, and Atrata felt pretty good. I don't know if backing it up by a bunch of assassins is is the the most competitive way to play it, but Atrata itself felt very strong. So opponent gonna do a bunch of looting. And hey, that's a new card. Post combat, so it doesn't really do anything this turn, but Prof's Edric Memory. Basically a reward for drawing extra cards. Well, opponent passes. We draw even more mole gods. Well, let's play Argus Cross. It doesn't do a ton. Hmm. Well, I guess we hit this Grelve. We need to get our opponent to the point where they have to block next turn, basically. We need them to have to block the Mole God. Really? Okay, opponent phases it out. Well, hit ya, hit ya. Down to nine, and see if we live. Are we still alive at the end of this turn? About it. Land. <clears throat> if we survive, we should be good, because we have Molgod. <clears throat> Curious Inquiry grows the Malcolm. Opponent. Oh, I don't know what that is, but a card on the Malcolm. Homestead Courage on the Malcolm. Can they make this lethal? Homestead Courage on the Malcolm. Nine power. I'll block the Skrell. Whoa, we got there. We got there. We actually survived. We actually survived. Does mirror box work with slime against humanity tokens? Uh, like the pumping mode? Let's try. All right. Let's try. Let's try the other mole god deck. So each non-token creature you control gets plus one, plus one. Yeah. So it doesn't actually. It doesn't actually do anything. It actually ex uh, specifically excludes token creatures. So probably don't want mirror box in a in the mole god deck. If Skrelv was suspected, that's true. That is true, isn't it? The menace would have actually gotten us there. Uh, let's try. Let's try a different deck. I want to try a clue deck. People want to see Insidious Roots. Let's try the Insidious Roots deck. Let's try Insidious Roots. Let's try it. Did you see that all access is back on Modo? Yeah, that's one of the best things they've been uh, they've been doing lately. The all access is uh, is super cool. Definitely something to take advantage of if you haven't. Uh, if you haven't played much Moto. So what is the idea of Insidious Roots? So this Insidious Roots deck is basically, so I think there's probably some way to like, try to make a bunch of tokens and use it for mana. This deck is more about the things leaving the graveyard. This is more about trying to make the plant tokens. The plant tokens do make mana, which is nice, but we also have Chalk Outline. So when a creature leaves the graveyard, we get a 2-2 detective and a clue token. When we have Insidious Roots, leaves the graveyard, we get a 0-1 green plant, and then both of those tokens are gonna make mana, so we can use that mana to have more things coming in out of the graveyard. And then essentially we have a bunch of stuff that can leave the graveyard, like Fairy Dream Theft, Surveils, and then we exile from the graveyard to draw a card will trigger the chalk outline trigger the insidious roots tenacious underdog blitzing from the graveyard moss with dread knight uh, adventuring from the graveyard so we have all these synergies to keep things going in and out of the graveyard no tyvar in the deck i mean what does tyvar really do in the deck i consider tyvar but it's like i don't know we have like a couple creatures that could possibly get back but there's really not it just doesn't really do anything um I could see, I think the value of Tyvar is, if you play Tyvar, if you're trying to build some sort of, like, 
combo deck where you're using insidious roots primarily for making mana with tokens then i think tyvar becomes a lot more appealing because you can tap the tokens right away to make mana so i think that's like would be the interesting part i just don't know if this build can actually really take advantage of that at all the raging goblin welcome to the visual for this six month thank you for your subscription big super thank you thank you thank you thank you thank you i sparky sparky <laughs> sparky never gives up oh my they sparky really has become a stalker this is how i'd bruise slime against humanity if i had the wild cards let me let me see yeah i think new Krenko, some sort of artifact goblin deck could be sweet haywire might goro goro imodane come uh kadama the west tree slime against humanity arcane bombardment yeah, I mean, Arcane Bombardment's kind of cute. I wonder if that's the best way to take advantage of it. It is, like, six mana. It is six mana. So if you get it down, basically, if you cast a Slime Against Humanity, you're going to get a second one. And then the next turn, you'll get two additional copies and three additional copies. That is pretty cool. I think you definitely, you might need to ramp into it. Uh, yeah, we'll keep this. This is good enough. Ooh, we have a surveil, lad. Would Prof's Edric memory uh, with a Triskid Decafile work? Can build up your hand size without needing to have an alt win on the battlefield. Hmm. Yeah. I mean, I think that that definitely helps with something like Triskid Decafile that needs a bunch of cards in hand. So I think that would be, that would probably be one of the better ways to go about it, I would say. Well, let's do a little Dream Thieving. Fairy Dream Theft. Uh, we already have three Dread Knights. Let's put this one to the graveyard. Millet. Kadama is in the deck top ramp, but seriously insane in the right deck. Yeah, Kadama can definitely go off if you can get it set up. Although, for it to actually be... Yeah, what's Millet? For it to actually be consistent ramp, you need creatures with counters, which is kind of... So it's only ramping after we've already cast multiple slimes potentially opponent gets in wow discards kindled heroism exiles another nt sure oh there's insidious roots there is insidious i think we gotta wait though all right we gotta play this we gotta kill the nt i think we just gotta make the nt die so go attacking hit ya down to 19 past the turn. Cool, so we can kill the NT. Graveyard Trespasser can get things out of the graveyard. I think we actually have to discard a Dread Knight as much as this hurts. Kill the NT. Discard a Dread Knight. Get rid of the NT. Pony gets a squee for now. But we're getting close to doing Insidious Root stuff. Pona heads us down to 11. Another Insidious Root. So I'll play the Graveyard Trespasser. Exile the Inti. Gain back a life past the turn. No removal. No removal. We need this Trespasser to live. Oh, we really need it to live. If it dies, we're going to be in kind of sad shape. Seth. Okay. Faces. Yeah. <clears throat> They're going to kill it. Lightning strike. Discards kindled heroism. Goes attacking. Yeah. Well, mono red. <laughs> hey, me, huh? Me, hi, who? Ooh. You know what? Let's try. Ah, boy, do we try best of three? I feel like. Hmm. Let's try best of three. Let's try best of three. I think we gotta, I can see, I can see why, <laughs> why, uh, CBG is considering retirement, apparently. <laughs> uh, it's just kind of just, uh, we're not going to get through nearly as many decks, so I apologize. So we're not going to see nearly as many decks as, uh, as, uh, as we would playing best of one. But we might get to see more magic. I think uh, we have to build a sideboard, though, for these decks if we're going to play best of three. Maybe this is a bad idea to switch to best of three. 
Uh, what else do we need in the sideboard to actually make this to make this deck best of threeable? Hmm. So duresses are good. Discards good. Uh, Tranquil Fillback's a nice little catch-all for Golgari decks. Maybe Assassin's Trophy. Now that Assassin Trophy is around, <clears throat> probably probably good enough. Giggs's Command I was considering putting in the main deck, actually. Giggs's Command can be our sweeper against aggro, and it gets creatures back, which is uh, going to trigger all of our stuff. Liliana, Liliana. Ooh, Terra Sunder. Kind of competing with Assassin's Trophy, but still pretty good. Yeah, let's just go more Tranquil Throwbacks for aggro. Boom. Best of three version. Let's do it. Path of Peril. Yeah, Path of Peril might be fine. All right, let's let's see if it even matters. Maybe we end up switching back to best of one. Let's try best. Sparky. Sparky. After each victory, Why? It'll improve. <laughs> the competition can be fierce. But <laughs> Why? You'll earn rewards based on your highest rank each season. What? The higher the rank, what? the better the rewards. Why did they decide to have... Your rank in the profile too. <laughs> Why did they decide to have Sparky just lecture people? I don't get it. <laughs> how can that be a known how can it be a bug like how do you accidentally program like isn't it a lot of programming to have sparky like appear in a new place and like have voiceover la it's a, like i can understand when the arrows aren't working right when you do blocking or something that seems like a bug but how do you have voice lines and like all that stuff oh it was okay so it's supposed to do it once and then stop I see. That makes that makes sense. I think it's a bug to be appearing when you only show up. Yeah, I would assume, right? It's like a new player thing. Yeah. Well, I guess honestly, considering. Oh boy. Well, welcome to best of three, where there's no guaranteed, <laughs> no guaranteed perfect hand because there's no hand smoother. Uh, this is this is fine, I guess. So we got a chalk outline. I feel like chalk outline has the potential to go off. A two-two and a, a two-two and a clue token is a lot of value for a creature leaving the graveyard. Uh, we will put a probably just soul transfer to the bottom. I think. Well, let's see what our opponent's up to. Ooh, there's Snake Sunderdog. That does repeatedly leave the graveyard. Is there a hand smoother in best of one? Yeah, best of one is not random opening hands. It like tries to generate opening hands that have the proper mix of land and spells based on the construction of your deck or something. My friend brought up that there's a good question now that you're doing live commander clash. Are you going to be doing viewer submitted decks? Yes, there's actually there's actually a a post up on the YouTube now asking for submissions. We're doing viewer submitted decks in a in a couple of weeks. So if you got submissions, get them in. Because, yeah, viewer submitted decks definitely not going away. It's just, uh, it works exactly the same. It's just uh, more, of a, more of a challenge for actually acquiring all the cards. But, well, there's Insidious Roots. There's Insidious Roots. Our big piece of the deck. So our tokens make mana. And when one or more creatures leaves the graveyard. Uh, we're going to play more Insidious Roots. When one or more creatures leave the graveyard, we make a 0-1 plant and then put a plus one, plus one counter on each plant. So if we never get mana and, like, blitz this underdog, we make two plants, put two counters on them, and the plants make mana, so it just snowballs from there. Honestly, if we draw land, we might just Graveyard Trespass or Exile the Tenacious Underdog just to, like, trigger our Insidious Roots since we got two of them. Do you think that Chalk Outline is better than Ominous Roost? So the problem with Ominous Roost is it makes like just like the worst tokens. I I really dislike the 1-1 one, one flyers that can't block. Or I guess can only block creatures with flying, which is almost can't block. That kind of just kills the card for me. I think if you can't play defense with the tokens, it there's just not a much of a point. You gotta be so aggro, and I'm not sure there's a way you can. You can actually make a you can actually make that happen. Plus they kind of trigger on different things, so we'd have to 
rebuild the deck a bit. Well, there's land. Uh, well, uh, oh boy, how do we do this? Are we just eating? I think we're eating it. All right, graveyard trespasser. Let's trigger some insidious roots. Eat our tenacious underdog. As sad as that is. It leaves the graveyard. It triggers insidious roots. We get a plant encounters and a plant encounters. Not bad. Not bad insidious roots. Not bad. <clears throat> that was pretty good. See, insidious roots actually seems pretty strong. That was just playing a single graveyard trespasser. Opponent, Land of War. What are they ramping? They must be ramping into Italies. Opponent going attacking. Hmm. What if we take it? We drop to 10? Yeah, let's, let's block. Actually, you know what? Let's block with everything. Let's go big blocks. Big blocks. Can I send you a link for the Slime Against Humanity deck through together? Yeah, I'd love to see it. Please do. Opponent. Elder Dragon War. Okay. To kill my plant. Well, that's annoying. That wasn't nice of you, opponent. Um, well, let's... So this is eventually going to loot and then make a dragon. I would really like to casualty this dig up the body. Let's just play a moss with Dread Knight. Cut down the loom speaker. Pass the turn. Hopefully next turn we can double dig up the body and hit two creatures and go off with Insidious Roots. Does Assassin Trophy and Insidious Roots help make Richard All-Star Moss with Dread Knight deck standard viable? Yeah, it might make his modern deck standard viable maybe it's gonna it definitely helps it slime against humanity Ooh. okay so going some uh some haunty gin kind of like make the slimes as cheap as possible i think case of ransack lab is actually good i really like i really like that card pwn it kills the mosswood red knight sure that's fine Because now we get to cast this, double trigger our insidious roots, and draw a card. Play the swamp. Huh. Yeah, let's just pass. They can blast one away our insidious roots, which is kind of a bummer. We do need to kill this dragon. Opponent, Rugged Highlands. Yeah, you can see the pacing of the game is just so much different between best of three and best of one. Like, I'm pretty sure we didn't play a game of best of one that has went as long as this game. <laughs> and best of one, it's it was purely just people curving out. Lightning strike going after a token. Sure. Well, we still have our insidious roots. Next turn might be decent. Oh, can we get down the chalk outline? It's close. So we kill the dragon. We kill the geological appraiser. Talking about decks, here's an attempt to cloak Nahiri's resolve. Oh, I have a I have a deck like that. Nahiri's resolve, yeah, like equipment blank. The card I wanted to try is a war leader's call. I feel like war leader's call is an interesting finisher. Cause so you're blinking the equipment every turn. They're making creatures each turn. And then the war leader's call is not just pumping, but also like burning your opponent out of the game. I feel like that could be could be a good addition. Uh let's just hmm. Pay the three. Get rid of the dragon. Has the Mosswood Red Knight deck from Much Improved been adjusted, or is it still seemingly underwhelming as it ever was? Um, the modern one? I I have not done any more with the modern one. I think uh, Richard still plays it. 
I don't think he's 5 0 with it yet. He's been on the quest to 5 0, but that's been for, for a minute now, and I don't think he's got there. I know he's come close, but I don't think he's actually I don't think he's actually gotten there. For me, it's still underwhelming. I don't know if Richard maybe maybe he's just so much of a old school modern gun player that it works better for him than it did for me. For me, it was definitely pretty like it had some good games, but not enough to Ooh. Ooh. Okay. Oh, this might be sweet. So we had to play an undead butler. Mill three cards. We really just want to mill some creatures for this dig up the body to go off with this insidious roots and win the game. We might be doing it. We might be doing it. Opponent. Okay. Mill some creatures, please. Creatures? Okay, that is a creature. So dig up the body. Casualty. Sack the butler. So Butler dies. Oh, this is going to be so good. So we exile the Butler. It leaves the graveyard. We get two plants. We grow our plants. We get back the graveyard trespasser. That leaves a graveyard. That makes two more plants. That double grows our plants. Oh, this is, this is the dream. This is the dream. This is the dream. The undead Butler is coming through. Okay, so two plants, two counters. Yes, yes, yes. Dig up the body. Mills a moss with Dread Knight. That leaves the graveyard. Yes. Double triggers. Mills. Fairy Dream Theft. Double triggers. And that's with four lands. That's just four lands. That's just four lands. And some janky, some janky, janky commons. And that is a big board of plants. <laughs> oh, that might be the sweetest thing we've done today so far, actually. All right, opponent blows up a bunch of stuff, but not the plants, unfortunately, for our dear opponent. And uh, the plants are going to get the job done. Cool. Yeah, maybe maybe there's some potential. Dig up the body felt really good there. Maybe. So this is obviously, like, very much a rough, a rough draft. Like, this is the first game we've played with the deck. Maybe the synergy of sacking the butler too casually maybe that's enough because like you sack the butler it exiles itself so that's triggers and then whatever you get back with butler triggers and then whatever you get back with dig the body triggers that's a lot of ways to trigger your insidious roots that was that was actually pretty sweet what is our opponent playing they're just like dragons i mean i guess we like terra sunder maybe liliana cut down well, we saw we saw some mana dorks. Maybe cut down's okay. We do need to be able to kill the dragons, or they will kill us. Trespasser does work. Huh. Yeah, let's trim a cut down. Maybe trim one tenacious underdog. Yeah, maybe go down the Shigiki and one Virtue. Let's try something like that. Do you have a plan for building new Clash on Commander? Uh, do you have a plan on building the new Clash on Commander? Oh, the new Clash on Commander. Oh, I haven't, I haven't built around the Clash Commander yet. Also, can we build a deck around Living Conundrum? I actually got to look up Living Conundrum. Is that the, like, four mana blue... Thing that exiles a. Oh no, it is not. Oh, living conundrum, the the laboratory maniac. I like that it's hexproof. Although it makes me sad that it exists in in our current standard. I think we can keep this. It's a little sketchy with only one land, but it is a surveil land. So that's kind of like. A land that draws us a card almost, if we're desperate for a land. It's like a very nerf uh nerf lab man. Hexproof is nice, although it is a little a little rough in Sunfall world. Uh well, alright. Underground mortuary. Surveil away the dread knight, looking for lands. Plus we want creatures in the graveyard so we can leave the graveyard for our insidious roots. Greeting from Chili R I said. Hope you're enjoying this that just got back my pre-release kit. Ooh, that's sweet. Well, let's get down insidious roots. 
Is Tyver good for this deck? I think there is a way to build a deck where Tyver is good with Insidious Roots. But I'm not convinced it's good in our build that we're playing right now of Insidious Roots, if that makes sense. Like, I just don't... Oh, we gotta keep... We gotta keep the second Insidious Roots. Um... Yeah, let's play the... Let's just play the Dread Knight. I, actually, do we kill the Mana Dork? Maybe we just kill the Mana Dork. How greedy is that? Kill the Mana... You know what? Let's do it. Let's kill the Mana Dork and discard the Dream Theft. Because that's going to leave the graveyard in the future. So get rid of the Bramble Familiar. Go. Boy, best of three... <laughs> Best of three feels like a breath of fresh air after those best of one games. So it's just a different speed. We're playing a different speed compared to where we were before. The Ghost of Deck fade in. Welcome to the Fishbowl. Thank you, Insidious Roots Part 2. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Insidious Roots is winning me over. This card might actually be way more busted than I thought. <laughs> so far, I mean, I guess we're playing against Common Land Dragon deck, but still... Still, it looks really good. How have the new lands been feeling? They feel good in this deck. I think it's really it's really a matter of like how many tap lands. How many tap lands can you support? Ooh, take Duma Sweet. Although we might just have to play it. Uh let's Fairy Dream Theft. Double trigger insidious roots. Ha ha! Ha ha, make us some plans, draw a swamp, play the land, and... Man, let's just draw with Dread Knight, that's fine. Draw a card, lose a life, pass the turn. Psycho Smurf, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big Super for you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, I mean, so far this deck has felt solid. Although, we haven't played a ton of matches with it yet, but so far so good. So we can... Restless Cottage also exiles something from the graveyard, which is funny. Well, I mean, I guess we do the thing. Let's tap this from mana. Dig up the body. Casualty. Sack the plant. Hopefully mill a creature. Ooh, Undead Butler. Get back the Butler. Uh, double trigger Insidious Roots. Oh, Insidious Roots is kind of wild. Get a Mosswood Red Knight. Double trigger Insidious Roots. Play Graveyard Trespasser. Exile a Dread Knight. Double trigger. When you draw two Insidious Roots, it just like wins the game. <laughs> this, card, this card is actually insane. Like, this, is, this card is just popping off. <laughs> like, look at this board. This was just for, like, playing random two drops. Like, we aren't even doing anything wild. We're just, like, playing magic. And next thing you know, there's a million huge plants there. Mixoma. Okay, maybe this card's legit. <laughs> maybe this card's actually, actually strong. Oh, no. <laughs> Don't even say three mana sunfall. No. Please, no. MK Smoke. Uh... I am a fellow tinfoil hat. <laughs> what, what is your tinfoil hat, uh, MK Smoke? And Jessyoth, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big tip for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Slimes against the humanity EDH. How many, are, how many are you playing is the question. How many slimes? 25. Okay, that's, that's respectable. That's like $100 of slimes. <laughs> Doubling Seasons, Primal Vigors. Is there... Ooh, Jace Wielder of Mysteries. Wait, are we trying to win with Jace? That looks sweet. I like it. There's no, uh... Hmm. 34 lands. That scares me. That looks good though. I like the I like the idea of it. I like the idea. MTG sets have been aligning with stuff that they want to sell. That's my tinfoil hat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I I mean, is that even tinfoil hat anymore? I don't even know. It kind of makes sense, right? If you're running a company and trying to sell things that you would want them to synergize with each other. It kind of makes sense to me. <laughs> 
What are your thoughts on show and tell? So OP, show and tell's a busted card. I mean, show and tell has long been a staple in legacy. That said, I don't think it's as good on arena as it is in like legacy. So show and tell is only as good as what you're putting into play with it, right? And we don't have like Emerical, which is one of the one of the most devastating things you can put into play. Well, Fairy Dream Theft. Do we want to land? Probably not, because we're going to surveil again. Well, Mortuary. Shigiki. I think we mill that too. Mill, mill, pass the turn. Yeah, we can definitely build Timeless Sneak and Show, which is pretty exciting. Why is Tragic Slip a mythic? So it's not really a mythic, so they do... <laughs> They have this new slot called Special Guests, which are like 10 reprints or so. Ooh, Insidious Roots. It's like 10 reprints from the set, essentially. Or 10 reprints added to the set. And they just have them all as mythics. Like, if it's a Special Guest, it's mythic, regardless of what the card is. So, really, the, the rarity of them all is, like, incredibly scarce. So, they're all, like, super-duper ultra mythics, really. But... Yeah, stuff like that, it looks weird, and it's annoying, I guess, on Arena in specific, because there the rarity really matters. For paper, stuff like that doesn't really bother me, though. They really do need to, oh boy, they really do need to do a better job, I think, of maybe putting things at lower rarity for Arena. Yeah, I mean, Domain's, <laughs> Domain's gonna be tough, this is gonna be tough. They have all the exile base removal, and then they also have all the sunfalls and so forth, which are just those are those are tough. How about a tenacious underdog opponent? You gotta be kidding me! <laughs> dissipate, <laughs> dissipate. <laughs> Who brings dissipate? Oh, it was so good against the tenacious under. Oh boy, we're we're pretty much done. Oh, that's, that's so bad for us. Oh, boy. Well, Graveyard Trespasser. About it. Let's it go, because they're about to sunfall anyway. <laughs> well, go to combat. Get in. Yeah, Pona definitely has the, the right answers for this deck. Why not have them just be card styles? Yeah, that would be an easy way to do it. Although, like, so... I think they're actually in booster packs for limited. Um, so I think that's part of it. Like, they want to have limited be the same on arena as it is in paper. Now that they're doing play boosters, special guests, the list, all of that stuff are in the boosters. So technically, they impact limited. So I think that's why. I think that's the main reason why we see that, honestly. Well, get in to hit you. There is a. 99% chances that we're about to get Sunfall, though. Hit ya. Down to... 14. I guess we just pass. I don't even think we can run out the Dream Theft that just grows the Sunfall. Pound it. Cycle Jatmir Gardens. I find it interesting that many people seem to care about rarity a lot more because of Rena now, which I think might bring a lot of changes to Pauper Penny in the future. Yeah, that might be true. When we draw a land. A land's not the worst. It does mean we can use this Restless Cottage eventually. Well, go to combat. Get in hit you. We don't have a clean answer to an Atroxa at the moment. Well, apparently they don't have Sunfall. I'm pretty sure they would have cast it if they could have. Dream Theft, Surveil, Undead Butler, um, all right, all right, we'll keep the Butler, pass the turn, all right, how about no Atroxa, how about no Atroxa, <laughs> can we talk about the podcast in the state of standard and streaming, yeah, what do you think about it, Owen oh, one by? oh yeah, please, uh, Mother Frogger, please, uh, Please send me deck submissions by email for sure. Oh, all right. That's a lot of three threes. That is a lot of three threes. So we can lock Wayne score one of them. 
And then get in with the flyers, I guess. And then undead butler. Pass the turn. Oh, that's so many three threes. <laughs> we need a rotation to happen. Ah, I mean, it's tough. So, right, I I agree overall. Like, I would be happy if they rotated more often and ban cards more often. Watsy. Watsy disagrees, which is fine. I think uh, it's tough. Like, one of the things about magic is the way Watsy handles it, it's not always going to be the way I would handle it or you would handle it. So I think uh, we just got to make the best of it to some extent. Obviously, like, give Watsy the feedback and, like, talk about it on the podcast and whatnot. Next rotation happens when Bloom Bro releases. I believe so. So we have this had just dropped. Then we have... Uh, uh, Thunder Junction, I think it is. Whatever the... That's the name of the Cowboys, that, right? Thunder Junction? Then we have Thunder Junction. Then we have Modern Horizons 3. And then Bloomboro in, like, September. And then we get the next rotation. Oh. Well, play the land. Blitz Thunder Dog. Get dissipated. <laughs> I mean, we got to close it out because the Trox is going to come. So we don't really have the option to just wait. Here we come. Oh, if we had our roots, we'd be comboing off with this underdog. Attack, attack, attack. Uh... Yeah, attack, attack, attack. Eat a moss with Dread Knight. I think we got to eat Shigiki. We got to go. We got to go aggro. Eat them both. Drain you to five. Go back up to 20. Can we close it out? Can we close it out against the best deck in the format? Opponent. Blocks. 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 Sure. So they kill the Graveyard Glutton. They kill the Underdog. They get lost a dream theft. Sure. So opponent drops to four. And well, let's map it. Map the dream theft. I think we got to keep soul transfer. And we'll hold on to the map. All right, pass the turn. Pwned at four. That actually gets rid of an Atroxa. They still draw the cards, but this does answer the Atroxa if they have it. I don't think we can withstand another another round of three threes. Oh, this is so close. Opponent. Two cards in hand. What are they? Do you think oh, an opponent scoops it up and we we're getting there? Maybe this deck actually is good. Do you think that Arena flattening the price of Rares and Mythics has made meta decks too affordable and the cost of brewing janky decks too unaffordable? A million times, yes. <laughs> no, I mean, so talking about Arena in specific, yes, 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 yes. That's one of my... So when we talk about Arena and we talk about the meta, sometimes we talk about, oh, like, you're seeing the same tier decks over and over and over again. I mean, part of that is people want to win, right? So people, there's a tendency if you're playing competitively or trying to like uh, rank up on the ladder, you're going to try to play good decks, a lot of people. That's kind of the default mode. Like go to the go to the metagame page, pick your favorite deck uh, that's, you know, one of the top however many and use that to grind with. So that's part of it. The other part of it though is the arena economy really, really pushes you into not building jank decks because your jank cards cost the same as the good cards so it's very hard to like look at look at ravnica murders it's very hard to uh spend your wild cards even if you really want to and it looks really fun on 
I don't know, expedited inheritance, let's say, or uh, maybe the pride of the whole clan. Maybe you want to build this sweet butts deck and you want to do this toughness manner defender thing. Yeah, it's really, really a tough sell to be like, I'm going to spend four mythic wild cards on a pride of the whole clan when I could spend those wild cards on whatever the most competitive mythic from this set is, uh, which I don't even know the mythics in this set. <laughs> There's a lot that I like. It might be Anzarag, actually. I'm going to spend it on Anzarag. Maybe that's the pick or Alquist prof or whatever. Very, very tough to get a lot of people to do that. So yeah. And then, and then instead of seeing a sweet spots deck on the ladder, which who doesn't want to see a sweet spots deck, uh, you end up seeing, you know, the, the same deck that you saw a million other times before, the sad thing is I don't know how to solve that problem. I wish I did. I wish I I wish I knew an answer to the problem, but I just like don't actually I don't actually have an answer to it. I don't know what the solution I don't know what the solution is. Like what would the solution be? Does anyone have does anyone have an idea? So the, the, here's here's the problem. Solution but it doesn't make Watsy less money. Because we know that's the most important thing for Watsy. Like, that's abundantly clear. So there's many solutions. Like, oh, just make cards cheaper. Make them, you know, more lower rarity cards. But they got to be something that, to even get Watsy's ear, you're going to have to start off with, here's how you can make this better. And it's either not going to lose you money or even make you more money. Because if it doesn't start there, then Watsy is just not going to listen. A monthly fee for Jank would be, that would be the best. That is the best part of Magic Online, is just how easy it is to use the subscription services. That really, that changes the game. Like, Magic Online now, they're even starting to do it officially. So they have like the third party subscription services, but they're even starting to do it officially, where, where essentially, you pay like $25 and you get all the cards for like two weeks or whatever. I do think if and when they do it with Arena, there'll be a lot of complaining because of the prices. Uh, so there'll be a lot of complaining because it'll be more than most people want. But I do think that would change That would change the game. Like if you could pay a, a subscription fee like Netflix and have all the cards on Arena, that would get a lot of people to do it. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what you gotta do. That's that's what I would like to see. It works really well on Magic Online, and it would be even better, I think, on Arena. Because the only problem on Magic Online is cards have actual value, <laughs> so it's a little bit awkward because your cards have real world value. You can trade your cards or sell your cards and get IRL money out of them. Arena doesn't have that, so it's even like perfect. It's even pr more perfect for Arena than it is for Magic Online. You don't like this at all. What uh, What don't you like, Necromet? Our undead butlers. <laughs> Not a fan of the, the butler? Well, you know what I say to that. <laughs> grab. Yeah. Grab a... Oh. Wait. I have emotes. Look at those emotes. There's actually emotes here. None of them are good, but there are emotes. I didn't even know I had emotes. Wow, all I had to do was click over one more time. Grab a leg. Grab a leg, opponent. Grab a leg. <laughs> Allow a wildcard exchange program where you can trade in a bunch of lower common wildcards for a higher tier one. It lets you use all the ones that you don't use to make the one that you want while still promoting purchasing packs and refuel lower rarity wildcards pool you have. Yeah, that would be... That'd be something. I mean... <sighs> What do you think of the comparison to, like, the, the Hearthstone dusting economy? Would that be better? I know some people are anti it. My initial take was, when they first announced Arena, I was like, there's no way it's not going to have dusting. It's just what you do with these games. Watsy found a way not to have, like, dusting, any sort of trading... I guess there's the upside that they get to hand out wild cards pretty freely to people, which is nice. Like, I think that is, that is an upside of the current system where if there was dusting, you wouldn't have wild cards, presumably, but why is Underdog got the rainbow? I've been trying to figure that out. It's just, it's like glowing purple. Do you see that? It's like highlighted and glowing purple. I have no idea what... <laughs> I have no idea what's up with Tenacious Underdog these days, but, uh, well, 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 
Do we blitz an underdog? We can also dream theft and then dig up the body. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, we got to assume that the bad things are happening soon. I'm surprised our opponent's sideboard in so many counters. Counters don't even seem that good against us, but yeah, let's just underdog. Blitz it. Go to combat, hit ya. Yeah, it's like shimmering. It looks nice. I don't know why this is our only, <laughs> is this a foil tenacious underdog? I have no idea how this happened. About it. Down to 10, down to 10. We get to draw a card. A land would be perfectly fine. All right, take Numas, that's fine, that's good. I guess we kind of want a green source, but still. So if they have a Trox, so we have removal for it. We got them down to 10. We got a handful of cards still. We're managing to like meter out our threats in a way where a farewell doesn't really get us or a sunfall. Oh, maybe maybe it's Blitz. Ooh. All right. Well, there's the there is the farewell. All right, all right, all right, all right. So, are we just making bears? <laughs> Maybe we're just making a bear now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, boom. <laughs> Agoth, sing to my nature, mill some cards, find another underdog, get a bear. Well, we've survived the first farewell. Up the beanstalk, draws a card. We do gotta get our opponent dead though, because I don't think we win the late game against this deck. I just, I don't think we do. Uh, well, let's. Mm -hmm. All right, Blitz Underdog. Go to combat. Attack ya. Shiny Underdog getting in there. Uh, Wandering Emperor. Well, that's annoying. All right, Wandering Emperor snipes it. Judgment is final. Now play the land. Run out the Dread Knight. Pass the turn. Oh, wandering Emperor. The Vile Outline is because it's castable from the yard. Ah, okay. Interesting. I don't know if I've ever noticed that before. No way there will be dusting with the amount of draft chaff rares and mythics. Sunfall and draws a card. <laughs> oh boy. Well. I don't know if I like our odds of getting in these last these last couple points of damage. We got our opponent halfway there, but halfway is not enough. Farewell and Sunfall and Wandering Umber. Uh, well, I guess we play a Fairy Dream Theft. All right, Mill a Dream Theft. Play a land. <laughs> yeah, I mean. Do we have to kill Wandering Emperor? Hmm. Well, let's... Yeah. But then they're going to play Atroxa. I mean, we got to kill it, though, right? Yeah, we got to do it. All right, go after the Wandering Emperor. It's the best we can do. I think Arena can encourage brewing while making more money. What if they let you craft cards people don't play at like X2 or X4 per wild card? That would scale itself automatically based on what people are playing and would encourage people to build more total decks. Something like that would be really sweet. I would love, I would love to see something like that. Some like discount on the janky cards or something. Some, some way to incentivize people to to be able to like experience it because ah, that's the thing like i think arena works pretty well for people who just want to grind like the meta uh, it, i think it does that reasonably well like honestly even for the complaints about arena you can like completely free to play your way into 
into a uh, into a top tier deck on Arena, which is kind of wild that that's even possible. So Arena works really well for that crowd. It doesn't work as good for the like I want to play fun janky things crowd. Those are the people that I think end up missing out the most. So I would like to see a way for that to be taken more into account. Uh, about it. Oh, are you gonna counter our Shigiki? Wow, another dissipate. All right, here we go about it. I will hit you. I'll hit you for one. Sunfall, farewell, and dissipate. Opponent likes exiling. They like exiling. Boshward, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big subscription for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Leyline Binding draws a card. Since I don't want to play Mono Red all day, I'm kind of bummed out F2, uh, free to play in Arena. <sighs> I mean, you can do more than Mono Red, right? Now well, let's play a Chalk Outline. Play the land. Casualty of the dig up the body. Sack the fairy. <sighs> okay. Please no way line binding. We really need these detectives. Oh. Mm. All right. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Leyline Binding draws another card. Well, uh, we almost did it. We almost got there with our <laughs> Draft Shaft Uncommon. Unfortunately, though, almost is not is not enough. Well, mill a couple more cards. Get back the Graveyard Trespasser. Play the Moss with Dread Knight. You were a mystery to me, Seth. You were playing Arena so much, and even made a video series on Arena tips. But every now and then, I'm watching your content. Some obvious thing about MTGA comes up you completely miss. Rearranging the view of your cards, drafting stickers, violent outlines, just to name some. Huh, that's just me, though. It's not Arena. Like, I, <laughs> I'm just, like, very... I'm not very, like detail oriented I would say with stuff like that like I swear I've been I've been living in my house for like over two years now like two and a half years I swear I find new like light switches and like windows and stuff I was like wait there's a there's a window there I never realized there was a window in this room before that's that's just how my that's just how my brain works <laughs> like wait there's a there's a light switch there that's how that works so i don't think it's i don't think it's just arena i think it's just like me but yeah it's a new window i never knew there was a window there <laughs> it makes life exciting right everything's new new and fresh every day <laughs> uh, i don't have to buy a new window i just discover that there's a window there <laughs> Uh, listen people you can have a personality or you can have technical abilities tabled on a cardboard personality people are both uh people with both are wildly successful and basically unicorns yeah i guess that's i guess that's true i'm in the same camp as you terrible companies being terrible companies is kind of continual oh did you see oh chat did you see we didn't talk about that <laughs> We didn't talk about the sorcery speed counter spell, did we? We didn't talk about the sorcery speed counter spell. We are gonna try a different deck after this. We will try we will try a different deck. I know best of best of threes eat away our time, but this deck has been sweet, so I think it's been worth it actually. <laughs> oh maybe that's maybe it's not actually my house. Maybe that's the problem. <laughs> Wait, is this is this actually my house? <laughs> Maybe that's why all these things look strange. No wonder I've never seen that light switch before. <laughs> Sorry, neighbors. <laughs> uh, oh, the sorcery speed. Did you see the sorcery speed counter spell? Not just the counter spell, but Watsy's like response to it was, was just basically like, "Hey, we're not we're not fixing it." <laughs> How chat? I need your help because this has been, 
This has been blowing my mind how this is even possible. It's been blowing my mind how it's possible that this mistake could actually could actually exist. So if you missed it, in the new secret layer, the new secret layer super drop. Oh, uh, I guess I just go to the secret layer website. In the new secret layer super drop, there's <laughs> There's this drop, this one. There's this one. Deceptive divination. It's five dollars off. Um, <laughs> they printed circular logic, a counter spell. It's been a counter spell for twenty years. For some reason, it, they printed it as a sorcery. My first question is, how is that possible? How how does that mistake end up being made? Like how how do you possibly? How do you possibly make that mistake? It kind of it kind of blows my mind. Like I could see myself making that mistake. Like making a mistake's one thing, right? Like everyone makes mistakes. I make probably more mistakes than most people. So definitely empathetic with there is some human out there who messed up. That's fine. The part that I don't understand is with like a huge billion dollar company, I just assume that there's like several people that would have their eyes on this like if you're gonna spend hundreds of thousands of dollars printing magic cards don't you don't you uh don't you take and like have a few people that check and make sure that it's like correct or whatever that's the part that surprises me i just assume that you would but maybe that's maybe that's not how it works maybe maybe there's just one intern that does all the secret layers and if they if they have a bad day and or don't know what an instant or a sorcery is it ends up seeing print Considering how many tens of thousands of cards they make, the amount of issues like this compared to how many cards are printed, like 2% fail weight, not excusing it, just impressive that there's not more QA issues, especially lately with the surprise staff layoffs. I partly agree with that. So I, I do agree, Mega Magic Carp. Thing I am that overall, uh, we like to, you know, meme on wizards a bit, but overall in the grand scheme of like the amount of magic cards that are printed, their success rate's actually pretty impressive like they actually have done a pretty good job they've actually done a pretty good job of uh of printing their cards correctly i will say that with secret layers in specific like if you're trying to make a premium product and you're gonna charge like that secret layer drop does not have much value like honestly if you just look at it scheming symmetry is what five seven bucks bolt common uncommon maybe worth a couple bucks, maybe worth a couple bucks. If you're going to sell like $30 worth of cards for, or $10 worth of cards for $30 is like a super special, like play an artist to do this wild art premium product. I would assume secret layer. Oh, I assume secret layers would be the thing that you would like double, triple down and get correct. Like the, remember like hostage taker, like looping with itself and some of the stuff like that. If you're printing so many magic cards and you're overworked and they just fired half your employees, but not half, but if they just fired a bunch of people who are making your job easier, that makes sense. But I would say for the secret layers, if you're going to like go all out on this, like art in premium pricing and all that stuff, that's a, that's kind of an, a, a rough mistake to make. Like that's, if there's anything you're going to get correct, I would assume it would be the super special secret layers. Well, let's, uh, let's answer this up the beanstalk at least. Uh, yes, we will pay. We will blow up up the beanstalk. We will pray for no farewells and sunfalls and hit you down to 14. About it. Yeah, can you imagine one of one ring and it's like, <laughs> I don't know, enchantment? <laughs> I mean, I guess then you never know because it's not a reprint, but yeah, there. I guess there are even worse places that you could, uh, you could mess it up. Opponent has even more wraths. They have found they have found a temporary lockdown. Yet another form of wrath. Well, I'll hit you down to eleven. Opponent. Well, at least that's a wrath we could potentially blow up in the future. Did you did any of you buy? Yeah, so temporary lockdown gets anything mana value two or less, and this is a three. So it does survive. A reminder if you need any magical cards. You can get them from our sponsor, Card Kingdom, over at cardkingdom.com slash mtggoldfish. <sighs> can we fire up the Restless Cottage? How many, how many answers does this deck play? Like, at instant speed. It can't be that many, right? And even fewer that they should have in their deck? 
are we are we safe? Are we safe to fire it up? We really need the damage. Oh, the odds are low. If they do have like a knockout blow or something, we get so wrecked. I don't know. What do you think, Jet? Do we go for it? Leyline binding can't hit land, so we're safe from binding. I think we gotta do it. I think we gotta I've been playing I've been playing poker lately. <laughs> And one of the things I've realized from playing poker is, like, I just play poker like I'm a mono-red player, basically. I just, like, okay, that's that's fine. Like, they could have done that whether we fired up or not. If their answer is besage you, that's, that's a win. And we even get to get a surveil land. Look at this value. Look at this value. Boom. Surveil. Uh, I think we'll keep the Dread Knight. But I just play poker like a mono red player, and I think <laughs> I think it's gonna rub off on my magic playing. Sometimes you just gotta you gotta just go for it. You gotta be aggro. Well, play another creature land past the turn. At least there's nothing for our opponent to really farewell away at the moment. <laughs> oh, about it. Looking at their temporary lockdown. Passing. I mean, we're gonna run it back. I think. Uh, yeah, Restless Cottage. It kind of worked last time, right? They had to have a besage you. Get in there. Exile up the beanstalk, I guess. Whew. Okay. Opponent goes to seven. Opponent goes to seven. Oh, do we have to play the Dread Knight? I think we... Oh, I think we do. I want to draw with it, but we got to run it out. Because 4 plus 3 is 7. If they play Atroxa, they lose. So they have to have, like, removal for Dread Knight into Atroxa. Oh, this Restless Cottage is getting there. The sub-messages no longer... They should pop up. Are they not popping up? Oh, I see... I do see one that was from Thingam. Did I miss that one? Always wanted sorcery speed counter spell. If I missed it, thing, my apologies. Welcome back to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big super for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh boy. Okay. Well, that's not the best. Now our opponent has many three threes, and we don't really have an answer for that. I'll go to combat, get in, hit you. Opponent gonna block. Well, Dread Knight, draw a card. Ooh, do we Liliana? Now, Virtue, kill a dork. Mortuary, Surveil, Shigiki, doesn't really do much. Oh, it's so much value. You know what? Let's keep it. Let's keep Shigiki. Let's play Liliana. Those who get in my way tend to Let's tick it. down Liliana. We're doing what we can. We're doing what we can. Sacrifices must be made. I mean, so we got through three of them. It took us a lot of cards, but we got through three of the five beasts. Can we brew Jeskai Control Deck with Lightning Helix? Oh, did I free? Hmm. Let me see, Free Jazz. Yeah, I don't know. Are they not? Are they not popping up on screen? Huh? They should pop up on screen. If they're not popping up on screen, then it's just something weird with uh, with Streamlabs. It might be a bug or something. But uh, I appreciate the, the kind words, Free Jazz. Hmm. What are the odds they have another ley line? Well, Virtual Persistence. Moss with Red Knight. We're fighting in Klon, we're fighting in Klon. Yeah, Jeskai Control with, um, hmm. Yeah, let me see. I'll try to re. I can try to refresh it. They are supposed to pop up. 
But Streamlabs is sometimes... Oh, they really do have the third ley line binding. Oh, goodness. Ooh, that's that's less than less than optimal, I would say. Opponent gets in with both. This means they drew something. We will take it. Oh, come on now. Opponent draws even more herd migrations, and I think that probably makes us die. Well, go to combat. Get in with the Dread Knight. Well, we put up a fight against the deck that's playing all the best cards from three years ago. So we, we gave it a good shot. We gave it a good shot with Insidious Roots. Well, play Insidious Roots. Dread Knight draw. Make a plant. Play the Dread Knight. Play the land. And yeah, I guess we just pass. Opponent goes to combat. Attacks. Well, we will block and block, but take a million. Block and block. Sack the food. Down to four. I will say we have not really seen many cards. <sighs> what are we supposed to do about that? Not much. Oh, you would have been good a few days ago. <laughs> Duress. You would have been good. <laughs> oh, we well, almost with Dread Knight. I don't think we have a card in our deck, though, that stops nine of these. Uh, Bitter Triumph. Kill a Beast. Discard Shigiki. Graveyard Tri- Ha! Oh, did they just draw those three turns in a row? They might have just drawn those three turns in a row. Uh, yeah. Dread Knight. One, two, three, four. Yeah, it's definitely not enough blockers. Well, Insidious Roots actually felt- It actually felt really sweet. I feel like Insidious Roots, out of all the stuff we've played, actually has actually has a lot of potential. It actually actually felt very solid. I mean, so we went what one and one. <laughs> we played the deck for like an hour. Went one and one. Well, let's let's try a different deck. Let's try a different deck. So, out of the decks that we haven't tried yet, is there anything you really you really want to see? So, we tried Insidious Roots. We played Assassins. We played Mole God. There's so many decks we haven't gotten through yet. I kind of want to just try a morph deck to just... I feel like morphs are bad. I feel like morphs are bad and that morphs will... Will just not... Uh, will not actually... Not actually be able to keep up. But I really want to try them and just see. I'm also intrigued by just like... Are clues good? Are clue, our clues gotta be good, right? Clues gotta be. Let me see... Ario, Ario, uh, Zara. Kaya's Dino Token. So how are we trying to make Kaya work? So Kaya, Dino Tokens. So, so wait, what is, hmm. How do we, how do we, uh, so we need to cast a Undead Butler to mill a big dino and then have a Kaya to exile the dino, have a token from like wedding announcement, insidious roots, and turn the token into the dino until end of turn. I mean, that's, that's a fun idea. I don't know. I think am I? Uh, I don't really understand like the Galta. How does the how does the Galta? Galta with like four creatures is weird to me because it lets us put our creatures into play from our hand, right? I guess maybe the idea of Galta is it's just like big, so it's not about the ability; it's just about the size. There's one more fair that seems really good. I feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, so I feel like Yaris, I think, is really good. I feel like Hide in Plain Sight might be good enough for Standard. I'm also like, 
there's you know what let's just let's try it let's try it let's let's try it and see what happens atrata cloaks Ooh. um yeah let's let's try the morph deck let's try the morph deck and just see what happens or face down creatures i mean face down creatures are like a huge a huge part of this set yeah, it's a cool idea ariel i like it yeah yaris i think is good atrata cloak Oh yeah, this is well okay. So we were playing Atrada. We played some Atrada Assassins earlier, which uh, Atrada I think I really like. I think Atrada felt really solid, and like we had Heartstabber in there too. We weren't going up to to like breach the multiverses and some of that stuff, but yeah, that looks uh, that looks sweet, Cordius. Yeah, I think Atrada is actually pretty good. All right, standard. All right, let's see. Is there any chance that playing face down creatures is a real thing in standard? There, I would be so blown away. I would be so surprised. Oh, I really want it to be though. It'd be really cool. Yeah, out of the cards we've played today, a trot I've really liked. Although I think Insidious Roots just surpassed it for coolest card of the day, honestly. Yeah, what uh, what can we do with Leyline in Standard? I know, like, so I've seen people talk about, like, Domain, which, yeah, technically that's true. Although, uh, it's, I don't know. I don't know if it'll actually be worth it. I've been trying to figure out, like, because Leyline's one of the jankiest cards in the set. What can we actually do to take advantage of it? D domain, to me, is just kind of boring. Like, sure, you can, like, have your lands be all land types, but that, I don't know. I don't think that's, I mean, it's not bad, but I don't really want to make that, like, the first against the odds or something. What other ways can we take advantage of Leyline of the Guild Pact? Well, that's a zero lander. All right, this one has some lands, at least. We will put probably Vindicator, I think, to the bottom for now. The thing I really want to see with Disguise... Actually, let's keep the Vindicator. The thing I want to see with Disguise is how much the ward matters. Does ward, does ward actually change the equation with these cards? The fact that we can play them... Like, it does make them a little harder to kill. Unyielding Gatekeeper has good text on it. Opponent must with Dread Knight to draw a card. Well, Battlefield Fjord, and yeah, let's just pass. We might actually just seek uh, seek the beast, yeah. Nykthos, yeah, it does work with Nykthos in... Yeah, I mean, it's still a 3-minute 2-2, two -two, right? The ward makes it harder to kill, but you're still not getting a big creature compared to... Like, you put your 2-2 your two -two and your opponent plays Preacher of the Schism or something. You're still kind of... Like, yeah, you can't kill it, but it's also not really doing much. It's, it sort of works with Blood Moon. I'm pretty sure... So, I'm pretty sure the way it works with Blood Moon... Because the idea of 5-color Blood Moon is really funny. But I'm pretty sure it works like Dry to the Ilsen Grove. Where it's like a layers timestamp thing. So... If you ley line in your opening hand and your lands are all land types, and then you play a Blood Moon, since the Blood Moon came down after, it would overrule essentially the ley line. But if it's the opposite order where you Blood Moon first and then ley line, then the ley line would uh, counteract the Blood Moon essentially. I'm pretty sure that's how it works with Dry to the Hills and Grove at least. So I'm pretty sure that that's how it should work with ley line as well. Well, let's seek the beast. Uh, still no green mana, awkwardly. Well, that's Novus Inspector. Play the planes. And... This is just gonna die. Can we afford to do nothing, though? What if they shield rid? That's pretty bad. They're just gonna cut it down. Alright, let's just pass. We'll just pass and draw with our clue. I mean, needing to spend three mana is... That is a big upside, right? Like, if it wasn't... If they just printed actual mor uh, morph or manifest, I think it would be, like, literally zero chance you could play it. But the ward, two, I think, gives it a chance. I think it at least gives it a chance. Well, there's a shield, Rune. 
Yo, I got a React the Crime in my pre-release. Let's go, so happy. Yeah, that card's so cool. That's one of the sweetest cards from uh, from the set, for sure. I think that card's actually really powerful. Well, found it gets and hits us. We draw. We get a little drained. Hmm. I'll play the land. Disguise the performer. Play another play another inspector. So I mean, next turn we can gatekeeper flip it up to get rid of Shieldred. So we do have removal in two turns. We still need green for this Yaras, but we're getting there, we're getting there. I just built a neat mono green commander deck. It revolves around the number of combos that are synergized with each other, and it has the feel of assembling a big machine part while playing. Uh, while playing, I struggle to include enough early game card advantage to get it going. Would you mind taking a look at it, and giving me suggestions? Yeah, let me see Alchemist Refuge, opponent. Oh no! Oh, if they take the Gatekeeper, that's super. That's super bad. Sarathe. I mean, you got a lot of mana dorks and so forth. So trying to do some tapping and untapping shenanigans. I gotta harmonize in there. I mean, this seems like a... To me, this seems like a reasonable deck. I mean, I guess... <laughs> I, I hate to give this advice. Oh, they didn't take the Gatekeeper. Interesting. They took the Yaris. Very interesting. I assume they were definitely taking the Gatekeeper. Okay. Opponent lagging, I guess. But, I don't know, you might be able to go down a land with, with having a bunch of mana dorks. That's one of the situations where I feel like a little bit comfortable cutting, uh, cutting down. You're at 40 now. I could see cutting down a land. You could play, like, Sylvan Library, like in Mono Green, that's one of the better like early game card draw filtering effects. I might try something like that. Slime Against Humanity is busted. I haven't played Slime Against Humanity yet. Is it actually is it actually busted? Busted is in like super fun, or busted is like strong. All right, so Dread Knight down for now. Pona can recast it. Sure, sure, sure. Well, we dropped to nine. Oh, still no green mana. Yeah. Well, play the land. Face down. <laughs> Can you beat our mighty two twos, opponent? Can you beat our mighty two twos? <laughs> Can you beat them? Oh, about it. Do you think a Swallow effect would be a color play breaking green? Essentially instant or sorcery that makes one creature exile another creature with less power until the first creature leaves the battlefield. So the So the less power thing. I could see if they if it was worded like a fight spell, I could see I could see how wizards could uh could justify it. But I do think it's like, uh, I don't know about green getting exile-based creature removal. I feel like we already have too much exile-based. Like, we already have enough uh, exile-based removal in Magic. I don't know if I really want another color getting access to that. Okay, we really just need to hit some green mana. Can we hit some green mana? Seek the beast. Well, that's kind of green mana. Uh, Copperline Gorge. Hmm. It's a little tapped, but it is green. Copperline Gorge, I guess we just... Huh. Play a Vindicator face down? I mean, our face down creatures are sort of keeping up ish, kind of, maybe. <laughs> like they're they're trying, they're trying hard. So we can flip this up to get rid of things temporarily. 
Or get her stuff back from the graveyard. One deck I've been having lots of fun with an MCAM standard is Carnosaur Combo. The Surveillance push pull make it much more consistent and resilient to aggro. Ooh, yeah, I guess that makes sense. I've always hated crowds. Um. Huh. All right. Well, those sack. This is gonna make us block, isn't it? Opponent attacks with everything. Well, let's kill the 2-2. Two -two. Drop to 4. I mean, we gotta get rid of the Liliana, for sure. Kill the Liliana. Fine. I know when I'm not wanted. Play a Questing Druid. Play Nova's Inspector. Grow the Questing Druid. Uh Hmm. I guess we should have played Delaney first, technically. I don't think the second clue is gonna actually gonna actually end up mattering, but we could have got an extra clue out of it. Thank you, I will try cutting a land for the draw effects. Sadly, library in specific is a little out of budget. Might need to find something else. What else is good early game green card draw in Commander? That's not something Mono Green does that well. I guess you got like Elvish Visionary. I think you already had that in the deck. Green, yeah, there's not a lot of like early game green card draw effects. Opponent. Goes attacking. Well, he will block. Actually, I think we got to block. Ugh. Okay, they have green man up. We'll block like this. That's fine. We'll block with Inspector. We'll drop to two. We draw forest. Now we play the land. Uh, opponents at 26. 26 is a big number. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3. Well, we can gain back some life with this Vindicator. That might be our best bet. So if we flip it up. All right, let's flip up. Let's flip up the Vindicator. Hit the Preacher of the Schism. Unyielding Gatekeeper. And... Deep Cavern Bat. Hit ya. Hit ya. Gain back four. Oh, we're we're kinda we're kinda doing it. This is actually kinda working. Glimpse of nature is good. You do need a lot of creatures. Miri's Guile can work, although I don't know if that's cheaper than Sylvan Library, actually. Abzan Domain Caves with New Leyline. Ooh, that actually sounds spicy, Ario. There's going to be some decks where if you have Leyline, it's insane. And if you don't have Leyline, it's so bad. I feel like that's how a lot of Leyline decks are going to go. Like, the good ones are going to be so good. And the bad ones... Ooh, Obliterator. The bad ones are going to be so bad. Wait, I feel like... Are we winning? Have we pulled ahead? I feel like we might have pulled ahead. Maybe Aurelia's Vindicator is actually good. So kill the Dread Knight for now. Well, now we get to one, two, three. Play this face down. Actually, one, two, three, one, two. So we can play this. Play this face down. Oh, I think we're actually winning this. All right, play a play a very mysterious face down creature. Go to combat. Also with Delaney out. Our face down creatures have ward uh, ward four essentially. Creatures you control with power two or less can't be blocked by creatures power three or greater. Right, so we can attack into the obliterator. 
Pwn it down to 13. We're back up to 10, and the tide is turned. The tide has actually turned. <laughs> oh, cream of the crop is a good sleeper choice. I like that. Yeah, this is like uh, Angel of Serenity. Angel of Serenity. I don't know if you played Standard like a decade ago, but there was... <laughs> That's the one reason I'm like kind of hyped about this card. Oh, this is going to be interesting. All right, let's flip this face up. Blink the Vindicator. So opponent gets back their jank. We get back our jank. We keep our Vindicator. Our Vindicator. Oh, we didn't make him pay the ward. Oops. Yeah, opponent pay that ward. <laughs> Come on. You don't want that to get countered. That would be a shame. You got to get rid of that Vindicator. Pay, pay that too. <laughs> oh, jeez. <laughs> Oh, it worked! It worked! <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! I don't know how that worked, but it worked. All right, we talked him into it. Uh, well, play the land. Play Yara's. Trigger, trigger. Three, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Uh, questing druid trigger trigger and Yaras on top of the morph stuff, it also just gives our team haste. Gatekeeper trigger trigger trigger. And uh, I think that is a very dead opponent. I think that is a very dead opponent. We appreciate you paying the ward opponent, but instead, we will kill you. <laughs> oh, poor opponent. Yeah, we gotta, we gotta get, we gotta get out of gold. We gotta get out of gold. <laughs> The arena, the arena ranking is, is a, uh, is kind of wild. It, I don't know what, have you ran into that in your games? That sometimes you're like at gold and it's like, Hey, play against, play against a, uh, play against a top 50 mythic player or something. Oh yeah. We didn't even add a sideboard to this deck. Hopefully that's okay. As long as our opponent just keeps paying our wards, we should be fine. <laughs> Ooh, double Vindicator. Yeah, I don't know. Were any of you playing back when Angel of Serenity was a thing? That was like Thrag Tusk era standard. We're talking like a decade ago now. But there was a really sweet Angel of Serenity deck that would like use it to... You'd flip it up and like get an Angel of Serenity and like a Thrag Tusk or whatever back from your graveyard. Or I guess you wouldn't flip it up because it it wasn't a flip card. It was just like a seven drop that you'd cast. But you'd use it at the same ability. So you'd like get back a Angel of Serenity from your graveyard with a Thrag Tusk or whatever. And then you just keep kind of looping them. And eventually it would give you this super grindy late game engine. I'm curious to see if Aurelia's Vindicator can maybe do something similar. Like we're in a pretty grindy standard right now. It doesn't seem impossible to me that maybe there's something like that. If you can just like survive to the late game, Vindicators, Looping Vindicators and other stuff just to like get this engine going essentially. I could see that maybe, maybe being a, a thing that actually worked. Well, get him with Inspector, hit ya. Uh, had it happened to me before, I literally only played Quick Draft Limited, and the only time I had a numbered Mythic player as my opponent, I was either Gold or Plat. Yeah, I feel like that happens more and more on Arena recently. Bats for days. What? Have you heard of the Bat format? Have any of you tried the Bat format? I feel like our opponent, they're not exactly doing it, but... The format where you're supposed to start with only Deep Cavern, four Deep Cavern Bats in basic lands in your deck... And you play a game, and whatever you steal with bats, you get to uh, you get to keep and put in your deck for the next round. Even more lands. That's disappointing. Well, uh, at least we got an Aurelia Vindicator. Our opponent's gonna know what that one is, most likely. Get in, hit ya. You play the bat and it was so much fun. It took you 90 minutes. How many how many rounds do you think it took you? Yeah, I was I was thinking about trying to do it for like a video or a stream or something. I don't know if people would think it would be interesting or not. It's one of those things where I think it's like interesting to play 
I don't know if people would find it interesting to watch or not. Found it. It's us. Ooh, gatekeeper. Well, uh, let's play Restless Bivouac and... Yeah, I mean, let's just keep disguising, I guess. We got a lot of face-down tutus. <laughs> we got a lot of face-down tutus. Yeah, the novelty could be... Yeah, I mean, you couldn't do it over and over again, but as a one-time fun thing, it could be It could be fun as, like, a, a one-off. Ash Lizzle made a crazy video, did three runs down to around 30 minutes for the final run. Yeah, I feel like the... The way to rank it would be how many games it takes. I think that's... I'm curious, like, the minimum number of games you could do it in. Not that it, I mean, it's a silly... It's a silly for fun format, so it doesn't really matter. But I think that would be... That would be the ultimate challenge. Like, just how how few games can it take to get a win? I've been trying to force Bombardment ever since the set came out. Now we have Helix. Is there any chance it could finally work out? Oh, another, another flesh gorger, eh? Huh. Play the land. And what? So many choices. So we can flip this up for two. Double block. Huh. We do need to stay alive. All right, let's play a face down creature. And I guess we just pass for now. No attacks, pass the turn. Wait, what, uh, what bombardment are you trying to force, Sanguine? Oh, arcane bombardment? Uh, I think Lightning Helix probably probably improves an Arcane Bombardment attack quite a bit. Like, the combination of being a finisher and also Life Gain seems pretty big. So it seems like I should at least make it better. Well, let's flip this up. Huh. Hmm. <sighs> Flip this up. I think this is... So if they have a removal spell here, this is kind of bad. Oh! No, it's tapped? Oh, that's so much worse. Okay, I would not have done that. Oh, that's, well, that's good to know. This is, like, bad blank. Okay. It returns it to the battlefield tapped. Oh, yeah, that's, that's okay. That's good to know. That's good to know. It comes into play tapped. Ew, that's really bad. Well, we dropped a four. Yeah, we would have played that differently if I had realized it comes into play tapped. I was thinking we could blink it and then use the Vindicator to block the Deep Cavern Bat, but apparently, apparently, uh, Watsy doesn't want us doing that. <laughs> oh, playing the land, so we're at four. Four points of life. We do get to gain back four. I'll go to combat. I mean, I guess we just race with this lifelink. That might actually be... How does a tally work with disguise? Uh, so, like, if you disguise an a tally? So, the thing to keep in mind about disguise, and I assume this is the answer to the tally question. Um, so, a disguise creature is already on the battlefield. When you flip it face up, it's still already on the battlefield. So you're not going to get any ETB triggers. So if you, like, somehow disguised or cloaked in a tally and then flipped it face up, you're not getting its ETB or anything like that. Well, let's attack and attack. And flip this up. 
for all of our mana. Grab a gatekeeper. And grab a deep cavern bat. Okay, I will say Aurelia's... Aurelia's uh, Vindicator has been kind of impressive here. Alright, we'll sack the, the Novus Inspector. Hit you for eight. Gain back eight. Opponent. Obliterator. Sure. Tell me you're playing Vein Ripper at some point. I do like Vein Ripper. I don't know. I don't know if we're getting to Vein Ripper today. It wasn't the Assassin deck, the very first deck we played. Um, we didn't actually ever see it though. Well, you know what the flyers? Yeah, really, his Vindicator is actually kind of sweet. Get in, hit ya. Gain back eight. Pass the turn. Maybe morphs could actually work, at least against bronze opponents. Italic against creatures for their dis. Wait, Italy. We're not. Wait, Italy. We're not talking about Italy, are we? Uh, oh, are we talking about a Trotta? So a Tally is like the big dinosaur thing. I think I've been confused. Maybe we're, there might be some confusion over the names. Are we talking about a Trotta or a Tally? A Trotta, maybe we're talking about a Trotta. A Tally is the dinosaur that always kills, <laughs> kills you with its ETB trigger. So the way a Trotta works is if you have a face down thing, you can pay four. If it's a creature, you flip it face up. If it's not a creature, you cast it for free, basically. Yeah, I think Vayner Ripper is pretty good. Well, let's flip this up. Get rid of the Obliterator. <laughs> Surprise! It's a it's an elephant. How is this elephant a face down 2-2 creature? And then why is this elephant, when it's flipped face up, a 3-2 creature? Magic's... <laughs> so this detective's a 2-2. This little, this little Rorschach-looking detective. This is a 3-2. This uh, this angel's a four two. The bat's a one. How how do the sizes work in magic? I guess you're just not supposed to think about it too much. <laughs> but this elephant being a three, shouldn't elephants be bigger? I have a question, if you don't mind. When pricing cards, what factors do you consider? Who uh, can you be more specific? So like when I'm like buying a collection, like that kind of pricing. Like if I'm looking to buy a collection from like eBay or Goodwill or something, what am I what am I looking for and how am I valuing stuff? Uh, let's get in with the gatekeeper too. I think it was determined that the average human is a zero one. I mean, I guess that makes sense. But like, what's this thing? This is a centaur druid four four. This elephant is a three two, so it's like half of a centaur. That just doesn't... <laughs> yeah, you just can't think about it too much. You just can't think about it too much. <laughs> I mean, honestly, it's probably for the best, right? In the in the early days of Magic, I think they were too... They were too stuck on making sure things made sense or, like, lined up with real-world flavor. And the end result were some really bad cards just because they had to make the flavor fit or tried so hard to make the flavor fit that the cards suffered for it. So it's probably better that our elephants play good and have stats that are wonky for an elephant than they have big stats but are horrible and unplayable. Kind of, I meant more like when new sets come out, how do TCG... Oh, 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 I got you. So, um, so Goldfish, we don't actually determine the price of cards. Uh, let me block here and I'll answer your question. What was it, 24... So we can block with, oh, this is like a free block, right? We block here. Yes, 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 because Yaris has abilities. Ha ha, check this out. Boom. Oh no, our face down creature comes back into play. Face down. Flips face up. Hits ya for three. And uh, Yaris is paying some dividends. 
So, the way it works in the magic market, so goldfish, we just uh, we just host prices from from uh, from web uh, from vending websites. So we don't actually like determine the price of a card in a meaningful way. If that makes sense, it's not like we. Uh, it's not like we uh, think, okay, this new card, how many dollars should we charge for it or something? Or how many dollars is it worth? Instead, we're, uh, we're mostly using like Card Kingdom, TCG Player, eBay, some of those big vending sites. And the way that the prices work on those sites is it's really based on a combination of what players are asking for. Do we attack with everything? Are we at risk of dying on the backswing? So I flare up this. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. I guess that's fine. All right. Hit you with everything. Here we come. These Aurelius Vindicators are like hard carrying against Double Obliterator. So the way the prices work for the most part. So we, we kind of report the prices from other sites. If you see like Delaney Streetwise Lookout, $18. Um, you see here, Card Kingdom is selling it for $19. The TCG mid price is $18.99. TCG is one of the best places, I think, for prices just because they're a site that a a lot of people sell on. Anyone can open a TCG player account and sell cards on it. So you can uh, see on TCG, the mid price is basically the average of all their listings for that card, uh, the mid, the midi in there. So you can see the lowest price you can get it for, 1650 plus 160 shipping. If you scroll around, you see higher prices. So it's basically that. It's basically these big vending sites that are selling cards or, uh, or have other people that sell cards through their platform, like TCG player. And then we just pretty much put those prices on the website. So it's not like I sit down and I think, oh, how good is Delaney? How much should it be worth? Like, we don't have anything to actually do with determining the price. We kind of just report what they're selling for. Uh, well, we go back to four. Arena. Okay, virtual loyalty. Restless Bivouac. Can we get 20 here? Can we deal 20? Oh, I guess we could have played this Questing Druid first. I don't think we had enough mana. Questing Druid. 4, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 4. I mean, we got it easy, right? Easy, easy, easy. And that was a pretty sweet morph win. I know, like... <laughs> oh, Arena's lagged. Arena does not like having nine creatures on the battlefield. Get in. Put a counter on it. That was pretty impressive. Maybe a really, maybe a really, uh, really is vindicator is actually kind of good. Like, I know our opponent kind of flooded out there, but those vindicators, the life link in Ward Two was actually, was actually very impressive. Like our opponent couldn't deal with them, and it just let us win the race. I thought a really is vindicator. I saw four two. I was kind of like, eh, I don't know, four two, not very good stats. Like, is that actually going to be good enough? Let's let's do. Oh, we're gonna have so many decks to play in the future. Let's do. Uh, let's do one more with morphs. A mite is a, a mite is as tough as a plant as a human is a goblin, but twelve plants will soak up all the trample damage from the culta. While Jurassic Park taught us that any number of humans and still dinos will wreak havoc. Think it through. A mite is as tough as a plant as a human as a goblin, but twelve plants will soak up all the trample damage from a culta. Like Jurassic Park taught us, it takes any number of humans and still dinos will wreak havoc. Think it through. Yeah, that is. <laughs> That's magic for you. Ooh, we get to play Hide in Plain Sight. Is Hide in Plain Sight actually good? Is this card good? Or is it overrated because it looks a little bit like Collected Company? Since Arena can... Wow, so many lands. So many lands. Since Arena continually shows revealed cards in hand, if your hand gets revealed and you have multiple cards in it, won't they always know which card it is? So... Once uh, once you play the cards, it goes away, I believe. I think they thought that that through that it doesn't actually give away information. So if you see your opponent's hand, it'll uh, it'll show you those cards, but then oh no, that's a quick chase. Alright. Quick chase versus our all land hand. 
opponent going to aggressively mill us? Draw a card. Well, I guess it's Delaney time. I'll run it out there. Pass the turn. I'm a little disappointed. I'm a little disappointed we haven't seen a uh, seen more new cards today. I mean, I guess maybe it's too much to expect it out. Oh no, is this poison control? Oh boy. Maybe it's too much to uh oh and we don't even have a sideboard. Oh we're Oh, I forgot we don't have a sideboard. Yes, yeah, this is... <laughs> this is not good. We're playing our best of one deck in best of three. Have you tried Manifar Surprise? I haven't. We draw Get Lost. Well, play the land. I mean, the biggest difference, right, with Hide and Plain Sight is being a being sorcery rather than an instance, a pretty, a pretty huge downgrade. Well, we get a couple clues. Any plans for draft? I mean, there's definitely a possibility that we do a draft at some point, but uh, we're not, I don't think we'll be drafting today. If anything, probably only another, another match or two. And I got to go, uh, got to go get a, uh, get bear and do, do that stuff. So. Well, I think we tried to kill the Jays. I'm almost tempted to just scoop this game and start one more new one just because I think not having a sideboard is going to be a really big issue against against uh, Esper Control. I feel like it's going to end up being frustrating just because that's one of the matchups where sideboard is, uh, is probably going to be most important, but we'll see. Has anyone tried drafting this? At? How is, uh, how has draft felt? I don't know if any of you noticed on the MKM pre-release cards, but it says redeem five per account. Ooh. Is that different than in the past? How was, uh, how was your draft? Already in motion. How'd it go, Goosery? It's fine. Not quite an expert, though. I mean, did you have fun? That's, I think that's the most important thing. Did you, did you enjoy your time spent drafting? That's a Jace on six. Well, play the land. Fire up the Restless Ridge line. You go to combat. Kill the Jace. Oh no, we don't kill the Jace. We have the Jace to one. Almost kill the Jace. Do you see the list cards very often? I haven't opened any I haven't opened any uh any of the new play boosters yet. I've opened collector boosters from the set and whoo we got wrecked on those. My god. The value did not seem good in the collector boosters. Wait, what are we getting punted for? Do I ever think they'll go back to shorter rotation? I actually think it's pretty likely. If there's one thing I've learned about wizards over the years, it's that Yeah, being a sorcery makes this way harder. Uh, how do we get rid of this Jace? Well, let's play the land. Hide in plain sight. Wow, okay. Well, questing through Yaris, I guess. Go to combat, hit the chase. Oh, we're about to get Sunfall though. The Sunfall Nightmare. The Sunfall Nightmare. I actually think if there's one thing I've learned about Wadzi, it's <laughs> things always change. So I would not be surprised to see the rotation schedule change again. At the same time, like, I want to, <sighs> I want to give the one set rotation a fair shot. Like for me, faster rotation is what I would prefer. And like more bannings, like, but I play way more magic than most people. Like I do this all day, every day. So what? is best for me might not be what's best for everyone uh so and, and i can see that right i do know that sunfall 
puke, puke, puke. Uh, is a very brutal card. Yeah, there's just no way we're... Yeah, you know what? All right, all right, all right. We're not going to play this matchup without a... <laughs> we're not going to play this matchup without a sideboard. There's just no... We can't even get out of it? Oh, no. Now we have to sit here? Oh, Rena. Sander has been the same uh, same game for the past three years. I think we've all played it enough. Yeah, I mean, I want to give it a fair shake, right? Because Watsy has been upfront about the fact that these sense weren't designed to be played together in three years standard. And we see that with the cards. You see, you know, the 11th Wrath being printed or whatever. Like, that weird stuff that just, like, that's not how it's supposed to be if they were actually knew about it and could design for it. So I do want to give it a fair shot. I've thought that their arguments were misguided from the beginning. Like, uh, I don't know if I really buy the arguments that they're going for. I'm not even sure that the arguments do what they want. Like, does it actually make standard uh, cheaper and better? Like, or does it actually make standard less accessible? Because, so that's the thing. Like, so one of the big arguments they use, and I've been thinking about this more and more recently, but like one of the big arguments they wanted for quicker rotation is, you know, players got to buy these cards and they want those cards to like last for a while. And it's, you know, cards are expensive or whatever. So it's and then painful when your cards rotate and you got to build a new deck. The other side of that coin, though, is like now we have like, what if you want to get into standard and you're like, oh, my God, like I want to play the standard format. This is supposed to be the accessible format. But now you need three or four eighty seven dollar shield rids. And we've seen shield rids price like. It's just been, you know, kind of steadily ticking up. And this is, I think, in part at least because of the rotation changes, right? Like, Shieldred normally would rotate back in here when it was around $60. No one's opening Dominator United. The Shieldreds that exist are the Shieldreds that exist at this point for the most part. So uh, no supply and people, like, still needing it for standard. You're getting up to the $100 standard card thing again. So I wonder if it actually works the way they they want it to even. Like, does this even do what they're hoping it will? Dragon Bones, welcome to the fishbowl. Thank you so much for your subscription. Big soup here for you. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. You spent 360 on shoulder and you can use them for three years. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. It'll be interesting to see what happens. I've seen just recently more and more... I don't know, what's your take on Standard? Because y'all presumably are not all content creators who are playing Standard or playing Magic like a million hours a day. What would be better for you? Because I don't want, I don't want my, uh, my per what's best for me personally, I don't think is relevant here, really, if that makes sense. Like, what's best for me personally isn't necessarily what's best for Magic. Because the way I play Magic is not the way most people play Magic. Uh, so I'm curious what's, what's best for you? Like, and I, and I know there's going to be like biases in there, right? Where like, I don't want there to be pressure being like, oh, like, you know, whatever. This is what Seth thinks or something. I'm very curious. I haven't played standard in months. Why haven't you played standard in months, dog? Cause that's not a good thing either, right? <laughs> like if you're just not playing it all together, then that kind of defeats the whole purpose of all of it. Players needing lands from the streets. Oh, okay. Oh, this is the, the Vanifar deck. The Vanifar surprise blank deck. So we're back to best of one to sneak in a couple games with this before I got to go get bear. I only draft now. I like playing creature based graveyard decks. I can't even play with some. Yeah, Sunfall. Sunfall is kind of. Kept running the same decks over and over and getting boring. Yeah, okay. Okay. So. Arguably, the changes might have been a negative for you, or else the meta is just a negative for you, and it would have happened anyway. I do wonder how much of it's also the card design, too. Like, is it the rotation? Is it a rotation issue, or, like, is it a like uh, sunfall issue like are there cards that they could re just remove from the format if they or cards that if they didn't exist in the format maybe it would maybe it would feel better to people because it is true that there's always going to be best cards right like there's always going to be best cards 
maybe they're not always like uh, they're not always equal power some are some best cards are weaker some best cards are stronger but there's always going to be something at the top that's that's just kind of how standard works and how most formats work really so if there wasn't shield rid in sunfall there'd be who knows what and who knows what but there'd be something there that people would be complaining about but i think part of the beauty of standard for me was yeah maybe sunfall you know is brutal and you hate it but eh, rotation will be coming in a few months and then there's no more sunfall and we can try again and maybe maybe there won't be a sunfall and you kind of like the you know the most brutal card in the next format so that's the part that's intimidating that's what really gets me is just like when i when i look at a what what hurts my soul i think is when i when i look at rotation and i think okay we got rotation coming up for six months and then when i think about it i'm like oh god but sunfall doesn't actually rotate this year like that's gonna be here for a whole nother year and then i think oh she older that doesn't rotate this year either that's gonna be here for a whole nother year and that's where like i don't know you ever try to think about like the number of planets in the universe or something or like stars in the the sky like something that's so big it's just like mind-blowing your your human brain cannot really comprehend the enormity of the numbers that's kind of what my brain does when I think about when I think about rotation and like sunfall surviving rotation my brain just kind of checks out in like 18 months of sunfall I can't think that big my brain just doesn't think that big <laughs> uh... I'm having a ton of fun with standard, but I think it's mostly because of you silly meta busting stuff. I thought I'd be happy to keep passing time. What are you what are you busting the meta with, Fence Post? What's your favorite meta buster? One with the multiverse. Oh, this is the Vanifar Surprise deck. So it's not really working at the moment. But the the idea of the, Wow, Rain is getting really laggy at the moment. We don't even have a big board right now. So the idea of this deck is we're trying to use Vanifar, which we haven't found yet, but we're trying to we're trying to cloak one of these big bomby things. And then we have a bunch of blink effects to flip them face up. Ooh, okay. So there's a the one with the multiverse. And then, oh, we need one more land to get that next turn. One with the multiverse and let's take Vanifar, I guess. Oh, if we draw land, we get to do the thing next turn. If we do, if we draw land, you get to see the thing actually happen. Okay, we're just gonna pass. We're gonna stay on defense. We're gonna stay on defense, and we're gonna pray for a land because we need this unyield, unyielding gatekeeper to blink this one with the multiverse to give us the one with the multiverse. Oh, what do you pick? What do you pick, opponent? What do you pick? You better not. Don't choose the middle one. Don't choose the middle one. No, 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 opponent. We need that one. Actually, no, choose the middle one, and then we'll kill your Brutal Cathar. That's even better. Please choose the middle one. <laughs> On second thought, please. <laughs> Go for the middle. Go for the middle. Go for the middle. The middle. Opponent. Oh, I wish there was I wish there was chat in Arena so I could tell them to... Oh! Okay. Well, they got the Vanifar. That's, that's still okay. That's still okay. I would have rather had it be the Portal to Frex. What? You just decided not to pay? Oh, all right. And after all that, our opponent didn't bother to pay for the ward anyway. <laughs> Three morph Monty, indeed. Oh, that works. That works. Okay, so. Oh, this is going to be sweet. So now we... Oh, it doesn't come back into play till end step, right? Huh. Okay, so now we're still going to do it. It's not as good. So we touch the spirit round. But this is the main idea. Cloak something big and then use a blink effect to flip it face up. So we are going to touch the spirit realm, our middle face down card. And then we will pass the turn and we'll get a one with the multiverse for free. <laughs> Oh man, it would be so cool if this deck was actually competitive. It's such just like a a unique way to play. Ooh, where Fox Bodyguard? Wait, we can cast this for free? Is this only during our turn? Oh, if we had an end step stop set, it would have worked. Uh well let's let's get lost this Adeline. Ouch. Yeah. Out of here, Adeline. 
Wow, Surge of Salvation. Okay. In the main deck. Interesting. Opponent with a big attack. I'll block you. Are we still going to lose after all this? Are we going to get a one with a multiverse and lose? Actually, you know what? We better block this Adeline. Let's do it like that. Block and block. Take a bit. Yeah, we gotta we gotta block the Adeline. We gotta block the Adeline. There's not really a choice. Down to seven. But we have the one with the multiverse. Cryptic code on the top of the deck. Well, we might as well play one with the multiverse for free. And then portal to Phyrexia for free. <laughs> Here they come. Sack some dorks. About it. They do have some good sack fodder because of those bats. So make them sack some stuff. And then I think we got to just pass. Actually, do we flip this? Yeah, I think we just got to pass. I'm still worried about this, Adeline. And this is going to... Okay, this is actually cute. Okay, so our opponent's going to flip. They're going to exile our face down card. I think Brutal Cathar effects might be getting worse. Actually, do they pay the ward? Opponent, would you like to pay the two? Eh? Okay, they do. Oh, this is actually great. Brutal Cathar effects are getting worse because we get to flip it back up. <laughs> Because now we just get to get rid of the Brutal Cathar and we get our Vanifar. Uh, sure. Sure. Yes, Luminous Phantom. That's fine. There's bad news, though, opponent. Why don't you do your attacking first? Uh, yeah. We will wear Fox Bodyguard. Snipe the Brutal Cathar. No Surge of Salvation. How many of those could they be playing? <laughs> Seriously. All right. Well, so I guess we'll block the Brutal Cathar. Drop to two. <laughs> they are all in on those Brutal Salvations. Yeah, at least two. We have found the number. What do you think of Stompy Jundak running Bone Brew, Axbane, Ferox, and Yaras? Seems like the pieces are all there in standard. Yeah, that could be sweet, Jigging Guy. Yaros has felt really good. Um, well, let's go to our graveyard. Let's get the. Well, actually, let's go opponent's graveyard. Let's take Brutal Cathar. Brutal Cathar. Finally get rid of this Adeline that's been absolutely wrecking us. Opponent gains a life. Oh, God. Uh, one with the multiverse for free. Uh, sure, with that one. And... <laughs> okay, so this we'd like to cloak. That's the other cool synergy is we can see the top of our deck so we can decide what we want to cloak with the cryptic cloak. So we can cast the Cryptic Coat for free. That's going to give us this Unyielding Gatekeeper. We can play the land. We can play another Cryptic Coat. For free. Another one with the Multiverse. And then play <laughs> another face down creature. Oh, I guess we could have done that for free, too, couldn't we? Yeah, I guess we could have done that with Vanifar. But this is probably better, because now we can put counters on things. So I think this is actually actually the better option, because we do need to end this game. Get in with the Vanifar. And that's some good face-down action. Yeah, Axe Bane Ferox, I think, could be pretty good. 
the the ward cost is intriguing like collect evidence for seems like there's going to be situations where that's actually kind of like hex proof yeah i mean we have removal here anyway but we can just flip up our gate if they have the third surge of salvation then i guess they get us but otherwise otherwise uh being able to flip up a gatekeeper will will keep us alive there's no way there's no way they have the third surge right there's no way there's no way flip it face up max island no they really do Our elephant. Oh, okay. The elephant saves us. The elephant saves us. And our opponent scoops it up. I think this deck has some... I think this deck has a bit of potential. I think it has some potential. The Vanifar, the Vanifar plan felt really good. So, oh, that was, a, that was a sweet win. That was a sweet win. Saved by the elephant. I will say, okay. So... So, we didn't get through as many decks as we, as we hoped. The good news is... We got a lot of streams and videos, so we will get through so these decks and so many more, I'm sure. So what do we learn about our decks today? What do we learn about our decks today? I would say Assassin Tripal, um, Atrata impressed me. Overall, the decks seem middling. Sadly, maybe the deck and card I was most excited about was Molgod, and that was the one that impressed me the least. I think we kind of just got absolutely... Absolutely smacked when we tried to play the Molgod deck. So I think, not that Molgod's bad, but maybe the build was bad, maybe the matchups are bad, whatever. But that's the deck that kind of flopped the most, I would say. Insidious Roots, we played really interesting games. And we got to see it go off. We also just got to see it get Leyline Binding again and again. And then the Morph deck, this is the one that maybe surprised me the most. Yeah, we didn't get into the games with it. It's so small sample size. But in general, it actually, like... It worked way better than I thought. When you consider that we're playing a bunch of face down 2 2 creatures, it actually kind of worked. And like the synergies, Vindicator was like a sneaky all star as a 4 2 flying lifelink ward 2. So that one actually impressed me. And I gotta say, overall, I come away from our first experience playing these cards feeling a little better about Murders at Carlob Manor. I think I came away from this overall feeling like. Maybe this set's a little more powerful than it's given credit for. Maybe it's a little more powerful than I've given it credit for. Because I think maybe, like, I don't know. There's so much text on these cards. The mechanics are, like, so wordy and weird. Maybe it turns out that some of these cards just punch up a little bit and play a little bit better than everyone thought. So I think overall I'm I'm kind of feeling a little bit like, okay, maybe this set's actually currently a tiny bit underrated now that we've gotten to play with it and there's maybe some more stuff going on than uh than we give it credit for so i wonder if it really is worth rebuilding angels for who i think it really is vindicator i mean i guess you gotta rebuild angels but i think it really is vindicator is actually worth playing in angels that's when i would consider an angels for sure aurelia itself i like better as where is aurelia oh was it a rare is there really a rare in this set Oh, it is. Aurelia itself, I feel like, is better as the top end of, like, Boros Aggro than it is uh, in an Angel deck. I just don't know if Angels is going to easily have three or five creatures attacking enough. I think it's some sort of Boros Aggro, Boros Token deck. That's where I'm intrigued by Aurelia being, like, your finisher, where you're just, like, the Bunny Corn decks we've seen a bit, where you're playing the Bunny Corns, you're flooding the board with tokens, and then Aurelia just comes down and, like, hits you for three, draws you a card, and if you don't win the game on the spot, probably wins you the game in two attacks. So I don't know if I'd rebuild Angels for it, but I do think it has a home. But anyway, everyone, I think that brings us to the end of our first Murders at Carla Manor stream. Uh, checking out some new cards. Thanks for hanging out, everyone. It was it was super, super fun. And like I said, uh, we're going to play a ton more of these cards in the future. There's so much more coming up. Uh, so there'll be tons on the YouTube. There'll be tons on stream. Reminders on the way out the door. 
Hey, Seth, you know, I just realized I've never seen you play sealed games. Draft a few times, but sealed not. I don't really like sealed. To me, sealed is like bad draft. If I'm going to play limited, I'm going to play draft. Because I like, the, I like the, the draft aspect. I feel like sealed is so random where if you get bad packs, you just kind of get wrecked. I like the draft lets you kind of dig your way out of that. But anyway, replay YouTube for the old streams. Normal YouTube. Tons of stuff coming in on there. And one more shout out to our sponsor, Card Kingdom. And most importantly, thank you to all of you. Y'all are amazing and awesome and spectacular. I hope you have an amazing afternoon. Have a great night. And uh, I'll see you next week to have some more fun. So until then, everyone, be good. I love y'all. And I will talk to you soon.